What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Fantasy Files podcast, the podcast that wastes hours of your life that you will never, ever get back. <laughs> I'm your host today, Spencer, and I'm joined by audiobook wizard extraordinaire, RJ Bailey. Thank you so much for uh, for coming in today, my friend, and, and hanging out. Thank you for having me on. It's always a pleasure, never a chore. And um, when I heard you were doing this, I was like, oh, I, I really like that series. Can I come on, please? (laughs) Right? That's that's so cool. That that took me by surprise. I'll have to ask you a little bit more about that in a second here. Um, But Gabe is stuck at work, uh, or at least he was. He might be here in the near future. Um, I'm not sure exactly what's going on i i think i think he's on the road right now so he might be on pretty soon um and he'll be able to hang out with us as well today but today we're going to be talking about retcon the novel um or wait no i mean it's (laughs) called uh (laughs) impact winter season three This is a Audible exclusive uh, audio drama that we've been massive fans of since season one. And I cannot wait to talk a little bit more about it here in a minute. But before we do, let me tell you that all of our links and RJs are down in the description. And you can reach out to us through any of our socials linked there. Uh, Or you can join us on Patreon to watch these episodes live as we record them and participate in the chat. Uh, You can get questions answered in the episode itself. So join us over there and and you'll get to uh, come hang out with us. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's at the Mistborn tier and above. Uh, If you enjoy the show, don't forget to like and subscribe. It does help us out a lot. And without further ado, let's talk about impact winter season three well really all of them because i want to get so i didn't even know that you were listening to these yeah um i don't i don't think i ever knew that you had started them so was it that was it a recommendation from us or was it just something you found or how did that something i originally found so i um Yeah, it was just, you know, on the front of Audible, um, it, mm-hmm. it it flicks up and it just shows you stuff. And it said, I can't remember what the cover was, but it was Impact Winter. And I was like, and I think it was one of those that was included, that was said included yeah. with your subscription. So I was like, okay, yeah, why Impact not? Winter. That's a really good title. And then I saw it was, you know, I, I really like the cover. I'm just trying to find the cover now, actually, to remind me of, uh, remind me of it. But I, I, I really like the cover um yeah. evocative title i saw it wasn't very long um so i was like i'm all, i'm a big fan of a short book because all, mm-hmm. i can just like blast through it and be like tick that's another one off the list um yeah. which perhaps isn't in, in the in the real true spirit of uh listening to <laughs> audiobooks <laughs> and audio dramas ticking them off the list um yeah. but i i was like yeah there's a skull on it um in like a a a red blood red uh mist there's someone uh with a sword walking towards me uh in the yeah. snow uh with a long coat looks like a a woman uh with long it's flowing a damn hair good cover. Sword. yeah it's very cool and i thought and then i was like are they fangs in that skull yes they mm-hmm. are and i was like yeah this is going to be my jam i think and it's only <laughs> four hours 55 so i was like yeah i can smash that um and it's a really nice distraction from an audiobook uh, an audio yes. drama because they're really quite different um in, in many yeah. ways so yeah I, that's that's how i came across the first impact winter and i didn't realize that they'd done i can't remember if the second one is conclu- the first one ends quite conclusively but um i i i only knew they'd done a second one because i saw the advert for the third and i was like oh that must mean the second one's out um, mm-hmm. so yeah, I just hoovered through the second one and as I was to, to get to the third and as I was doing the third, we did the stream, uh, for yes. your thousand subscribers. And I was like, and at the end of that, you mentioned you were going to do impact winter. And I was like, I'm almost, I sent you a message <laughs> after saying I, I'm almost yeah. done with number two. I'm almost going into number three now. So yeah, it worked oh. out very nicely. That's that's so great. I'm so glad that uh that you got into them because mm-hmm. 
Yeah, we have, so we, we stumbled across the first one in very much the same way where the, uh, you know, I, I saw the cover on Audible and I was just like, what is this thing? And it was very early on in our, our podcast. I think it was in the first year of our podcast and I listened to it and I'm like, dude, that is like not only is it so good just with the audio like you got to listen to these things with both headphones in right because it's just like yeah. this beautiful like surround audio where yeah. if somebody's if somebody's walking up to the left of the character you're not going to hear that if you only have your right earbud mm -hmm. in you know what i mean yeah. so it's that like blew my mind i was like wow this cool like surround sound audio is so awesome mm -hmm. um and then not only that but just the acting and the music and the story. I was like, there's gotta be, there's gotta be something that suffers. Like it, like it, it can't all be this good. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like not yeah, every yeah, yeah. single part of it can be this good. There's gotta be a part of it that like suffers a little bit. It's probably yep. going to be the story, but I got to the end of the book and I'm like, that was a damn good story. I Absolutely. really, yeah. I Absolutely. really liked it. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, we we went crazy over it, and we uh, we did an episode for that. And then when the second season dropped, uh, not too long ago, it was either like it was either sometime last year or it was early this year. I think they're oh, getting really? quick. Yeah, I think they're getting pretty quick with them because uh -huh. um, we had to wait. I remember having to wait about a year and a half to almost two years in between the first season and the second. Mm -hmm. um, and then the, the wait between two and three was like lightning quick. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, and especially with the way that two leaves off, it would, it would suck to have to wait a couple years to get some answers to the yeah. second season's finale. But, um, but yeah, when when the second season came out, we just completely lost it. We're like, what? And we mm -hmm. like went at it again. And then when this dropped, man, the the whole like group chat, like I just sent the screenshot of Impact <laughs> Winter Season Three, and everybody just loses it. And it was oh, it was such a fun experience uh, listening to it along with all of the other co-hosts and everybody's talking in the group chat. Like this mm -hmm. is crazy. And uh, yeah, what what a great experience yeah. this audio drama has been. It's mm -hmm. it's absolutely my favorite audio drama, and uh, and you and you and I were talking before we started recording that um, you know there's a lot of different like graphic audio uh, books out there that kind yeah. of do the audio drama thing. Yeah, and. Um, I think that, like, I don't, like, this is by um, Skybound Entertainment is the yeah. people that do these books yeah. uh, or these audio dramas. And it's just, like, really polished. Like, yeah, it is just, so like, man. I, and I'm, I'm curious from a, you know, I, if, I, if I didn't introduce you properly in the beginning of this episode, obviously you're a audiobook narrator, voice actor. Mm -hmm. what, what do you think? What, I'm the like, is Azadi. Azadi and Azadi, yeah. yes. <laughs> Azadi. <laughs> um, <laughs> do you, what, do, what do you think of uh, Impact Winter and what it's doing as an audio drama you know, through, through the lens of someone that works in that, in that field. Do you have any thoughts? Yeah. So, um, as someone who works in the field and is, I've made a few audio dramas myself as well. Like mm. I have, um, done sound design. I've done not only, you know, I, there's a magazine I've, who have released audio dramas, a science fiction magazine called shoreline of infinity. I've done some mm. audio dramas for them doing the sound design and or acted in them. Um, I have done it for, um, uh, who else have I done it for? Yeah. Uh, spiteful puppet who have done like, who have the license for a, an old eighties TV show called Robin of Sherwood. And I've sound designed one of theirs, uh, I think called the Templars promise. Um, so I have done it myself mm. in a professional capacity and I really enjoy it. And I've done, done stuff for independent, um, publishers as well. 
Um, and I'm doing something else, uh, which I'm really excited about, but that's tippy top secret, but I am getting to work with two of my heroes. I'm so excited. Maybe I'll tell you off camera. Uh, but, um, yeah, so, uh, but it's absolutely Im impeccable. And what's, what's interesting is, so I, I, I'm not quite sure who makes, have you heard 1984, the audio drama? I have not, but I've been told that it's one I need to listen to. It's really good. And I think that's by, I just think that, I think that's just by Amazon Studios or Audible Studios. So, you know, mm. the biggest of the big possible. And I went from, and that stars. That has, does that have Andrew Garfield? <laughs> it's got Andrew Garfield, Tom Hardy, yeah. Andrew. It's, yeah. it's, got, it's got like Spider-Man. Bane and Moriarty as the main like characters. Right. Um, it's absolutely crackers. Right. And and oh yeah, Matt Bellamy. Do you know the band Muse? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah I love the Muse. Matt Bellamy from Muse does the music <laughs> in it as well. He scored it, right? So this is as big no as way. it gets, in my opinion. Wow. And I went straight from uh 1984 to Impact Winter Season Two, and the quality is exactly the same. Like the quality mm. is easily as good, which I think is astonishing given the fact that the other one's got like literally Hollywood superstars in it, right? Yeah. They've got that kind of budget to throw at it, those kind of resources. Um, and the fact that, you know, this is not to poo poo on um, any of the voice actors in Impact Winter. And some of them, you know, sure. are stars in their own right, but mm -hmm. nobody in it is Spider-Man. Nobody in it is Bane. Right. <laughs> Nobody in it is like, you know. Uh, yeah. So, you know, but the the level of acting, the level of sound design and music is just up, up there with the very best. And I know that because I've made the one from the other comparison. Absolutely incredible. I think it's a real yeah. achievement. And I know it is. I love doing audio dramas. Don't get me wrong. But that the amount of time and money, well, the amount of time and resources and effort you have to put into making an audio drama compared to just making an audio book, right? Mm -hmm. Generally, there's no money in audio dramas and you have to do it as a passion um, okay. and release it as a passion project. Um, right. Generally, that's by and large because there's so little money in it because they're so intensive to make. But these guys have absolutely smashed it at the highest possible level. Um, mm. So yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm sorry, I had a brain fart then, because I was like, why was I saying like there's almost no money in it? There is almost no money in it because oh yeah, that's how hard it is to make them and do them properly. Right. It's yeah. so hard that it's very difficult to make money from them um, because also it's a niche product. Like it's mm. not like an audio book which people are more familiar with. So much more. In many ways, some might say it's easier to access an audiobook mentally because it's one voice telling you a story. It's just someone reading you a story like you had right. done at nighttime as a child. Whereas this yeah. is like, it's a movie in your mind uh, mm -hmm. to steal the um, tagline from a different company, Graphic Audio. Um, yeah. So like it's kind of niche. People maybe still don't quite know what they are compared to audiobooks uh, or TV or movies. Um, but they have like really excelled in what is um, a difficult to do uh, field, I, I believe personally. That's amazing. Yeah, it it certainly comes through just in the you know just as someone who's a I wouldn't say like a casual listener, but as someone mm -hmm. who's like you know I don't I don't work in the industry or anything, but it it comes off to me as like every every sound that they use in this thing has a very specific purpose and it's meant to color a certain part of the scene. Um, yeah. You know, every, everything that happens and, and some of the sounds are, are so unique because you would think like, well, how can you distinguish like the crinkle of paper to like, boots walking through like gravel or something mm -hmm. like how how do you distinguish those two things but yeah. somehow they do it i i don't know what the magic is but there's <laughs> there's just some way where they they give you enough of the context of the scene 
Yeah. And they they use these various sounds where you're like, oh, she just like crumpled up a piece of paper. Like somehow, yeah. somehow that just comes through so well without them having to tell you. And mm-hmm. it is the ultimate it's the ultimate exercise in show don't tell <laughs> like yeah is, totally totally yeah so yeah yeah it's so cool man yeah i love yeah. it i love it there were certain things um, where it's like i would catch myself knowing what something is and then because obviously i, I love i do love audio dramas and i love um uh audio um entertainment books. anyway that's my job yeah books and stuff like that uh but not just books like music and stuff I love audio entertainment. I would catch myself going, I can't believe I just immediately knew what that was from the sound yeah. effect alone. Cause that is, that should be something that's fairly hard to um, decipher in a movie. Right. That would have been a close up shot. So you could see them unfolding a piece of paper or something or scribbling yeah. on something, not just scribbling on something, but perhaps scribbling on something angrily or something like that. Right. You know? Yeah. Oh man. It's like, it's so good. Really able to convey I- emotion through the foley, uh, you know, the sound design on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. One of, one of my favorite scenes in the in the series so far, um, and I I wish I had re-listened to it just before this episode or something. But there's in, in the very first scene that we see in the first season mm-hmm. is Darcy when she's uh, still human. And Felix, Spoilers. and they're up in, they're up in like this watchtower, yeah. And uh, she, um, they're like spending the night out there. And there's a number of things like that where she's like walking around the, just like the area and like picking stuff up and like talking as she's doing it. Mm-hmm. And it was almost like, you know, obviously I can't speak for the people that made this thing, but it's almost like we need a scene where we're introducing the reader to the idea that they're going to have to listen for different sounds and stuff because there's a lot that happened in that scene that they aren't explaining to you. Yeah. Um, Like, like rolling out the sleeping bags or even there's, there's a, there's a moment where, um, I think they're facing, they're in the same sleeping bag, if I remember correctly, and they're they're facing like back to back. And mm-hmm. he's like, you know, or or she says, you know, you can you can like turn around and like basically spoon me if you want. And he's like, I don't know, is that weird? And he's like kind of going back and forth about it. And then yeah. you just hear like the tiniest shuffle in the sleeping yeah. bag. You just you just hear him like turn over in the sleeping bag and that's all it tells you. It doesn't tell you like there's nothing else to tell you that he ended up like turning around and like mm-hmm. basically spooning her or whatever. And it's like it's little stuff like that where I'm just like, "Damn, how did yeah. they do this?" It's so good. It's so 100%. good. 100%. That's exactly <laughs> that thing where it's like it's emotion through sound effects and it's like the hesitation yes. that they put in there. And and I think you've, you know, you've hit upon a really good point there um that like yeah it does seem i didn't notice this until you said it but I, it rings so true to me that they um seem to be training the listener in yes. how to absorb an audio drama especially an audio drama that's quite um dense with its sound effects mm-hmm. as well yeah um, like i've listened to um like in the uk um probably the most well, the most, most, you know, there's radio plays like The Archers on BBC Radio 4, which is like a drama. Um, it's like a soap opera. Um, okay. And um, that's probably a fairly sparse um, soundscape. So, mm. you know, you'll hear tweeting birds and it's, you know, it, it is, you know, to be fair, it's a, you know, it's a drama, it's a, a soap opera. So, it is people in their kitchens having conversations and making cups of tea and stuff like that. Right. So it doesn't call for like a post-apocalyptic uh, <laughs> wasteland full of vampires. Um, but, um, you know, I think like there's that um, and, and perhaps the big Finnish Doctor Who ones, they have a more um, mm. simple sound design, um, which is good very good in its own way because it's not asking it's not overloading your one sense that you are using to take this in it's not like a movie where you can watch or tv 
where you can what you know you've got two sensors that take it in you've got your eyes and your ears to absorb information um whereas this is all going through your um ears and i think they're trying to put the same information amount of information that say a movie has into one receptor instead of two uh information receptors um and yeah you have that quite simple sound design uh in the archers where you make cups of tea they're in the pub it's pub background noises you can hear the right. noise of cricket being played or something in the background very english countryside very quiet very um serene very peaceful idyllic whereas in this yeah they are trying to like train you to go this is going to be a lot so uh, right. you know listen listen up but not in a kind of like we're going to challenge you way it's just right you don't notice that it's like going just prepping you like this is mm-hmm. this is information being conveyed just know that we are going to be telling you a story with sound effects as much yeah. as the dialogue and the uh, occasional right. prose narration as well exactly yeah and i think um you know I, I i think another part of that too for for listeners i'll say um you know do i i would not put this on any higher speed than like 1.2 if you feel like you need to speed it up a little bit i guess that's okay but i typically listen to this on uh one time speed or 1.2 because there's so much you'll miss if mm. uh if you're if you're going through it like a two time like i couldn't imagine listening to this at a two times speed there's so much to uh to kind of take in in Mm, in mm. each scene do you Um, commonly listen to things at different speeds then i i do i think normally i wouldn't if i didn't Uh have to read if i didn't have to read things so quickly for the podcast yeah Yeah, sure normally i would listen to uh something at a more casual speed Mm -hmm. like if i'm if I if I have a couple weeks off of needing to read something for the podcast, I'll listen at like a one point two speed, just right. so it's like a little bit quicker pace, but it's not like I'm not missing all of the cool like voice narration and stuff. Yeah. Um, but like if I'm if I'm listening to uh like a big book for the podcast, like recently we did um recently we did way of kings by brandon mm-hmm. sanderson and mm-hmm. that's a big ass book and we had like a couple weeks to read it i think the book itself is like a 50 hour audiobook and so it was right, like okay. okay put that thing on 1.7 speed and, <laughs> and yeah get going. Plus, i think it, i think it also uh it also depends on the narrator because there's some there's some narrators that do very cool things with their voices. I think you're one of them uh, Thanks, where they'll do like, kind. yeah, I mean like they'll, they'll do like d- obviously different voices for characters, but even like little hesitations on certain lines and like little, just little minute things that like a normal person would do in conversation. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, RJ, I don't know if you've ever listened to ninth house. I have um, not, no. Tell me about it. it. It's like I uh I don't I don't know. I, I think the story I think you'd probably be fine with the story. It doesn't have like a mind blowing story or anything. Like the story was mm-hmm. good, I enjoyed it, but the the narrator for it is so amazing. She's so good. Um yeah. She she did all sorts of cool little things with her voice to like convey certain emotions and it this rarely happens to me but I was like texting the the podcast group chat and every now and then I would just say man I am just so floored by what this narrator is doing uh-huh. <clears throat> and uh, I think that. Um, it's not super often that I find a female narrator that really clicks with what I like to listen to. Sure. Um, And I, I've certainly listened to good female narrators, but this lady was just something else. Like she was so, so good. So Um, I've got, uh, is this by Lee Bardugo? Yeah. Yeah. And it's uh, Lauren Fortgang, right? Yes. Yeah. I will put that on my list. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, she was fantastic in it. 
Um, and there, what's funny is there's also a male narrator in that book, and he is mm -hmm. not good. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> but, but he he only he only comes in a couple times. Okay. Um, but yeah, I I kind of forget what I was saying. Um, oh, it so it depends on the it depends on the narrator. Uh, sure. Because with with someone like Lauren, I want to slow that down as much as I can and yes. hear every like little inflection that she's making. Mm -hmm. But then something like the Way of Kings or any of the Wheel of Time books, those are narrated by Michael Kramer and Kate Redding, mm -hmm. um, which a lot of people really like them. I they're by far my least favorite uh audiobook narrators right okay. um just because i think they're they're not bad i just i think they just tell the story and i, I don't think okay. they do much beyond that yeah um and uh and so with someone like that yeah i'm cranking that thing up to like 1.7 1.8 <laughs> just to like just to get some pace rolling into it sure um but yeah, I yeah. think there is those two styles of, and some people, mm -hmm. you know, like both, some people, um, like one, some people like the other. And if you like neither, then you probably don't listen to audiobooks. But, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, there is the, the more, I would say, a more old school way of doing it, which is just, I'm going to read you the story and you mentally do right. all of the work. Um, yeah. you have to act. In a way, like you have to imagine that this character has got a different voice because I'm not going to do it for you, um, right. which is one perfectly valid way of doing it. And then there's the other way, which is, I guess, I think my way. Uh, maybe it's the more modern way. I'm not sure, um, which is, uh, I think, the way you favor as well, which is a Acting. I hesitate to say it. But yeah, like a more actorly kind of approach where you are doing um, different voices and stuff and a lot of naturalistic kind of stuff and playing with timing and playing with like pauses and support i use pauses a great deal in my voice acting to add yeah. um, emphasis and stuff like silence can be you know in a in a for someone who talks silence for a living silence is probably one of my most impactful tools um yeah so yeah that, that's probably the more um the more the way that i i probably prefer and that's why i do it that way um, yeah, there yeah. are those two kind of versions, aren't there, of voice acting. So I can see yeah, why sure. you're doing the more traditional way. If it's just not acting so much as information delivery, story deli mm -hmm. word delivery, and then you just work with the words that you've been told in your head yeah. more, um, I can see why you can just speed that up more because you can take in those words faster and deal with them as you so wish. Exactly, yeah. I can kind of just like, play it on a quick speed and and let my mind kind of interpret mm -hmm. it i guess yeah yeah so i guess if we're you know not not so much uh necessarily still talking about audiobooks but i mean mm -hmm. this does have a great audiobook as well but i was gonna say if you liked impact winter have you seen the empire of the vampire and empire of the damned books by jay Kristoff? they are on my list um okay. a tbr i believe it's yeah. called uh <laughs> yeah. based on your recommendation <laughs> okay. again yeah yeah um but i am quite terrified to um start them because aren't they like 27 hours or something like they're very, long. very long and they're i'm very like, long i am sure that's going to be amazing and quite the journey mm -hmm. but yeah i am <laughs> one of those people that looks at that and gets quite frightened and yeah I'm someone who's generally like, hello, seven hour audiobook. Yes, please. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You know, I've um, only recently started being a comfortable with going in for a 13 hour audiobook or a 14 hour <laughs> one. <laughs> Absolutely. Every little thing that you loved about Impact Winter yeah. is Empire of the Vampire. Like they, like they, they could That's be in the same cool. world. Like they're, they're very, oh, very really? similar. Yeah, they they mm -hmm. could potentially like, yeah. There's there's so many Wh similarities between the two. Okay, so in what way? Because and we, are we full on spoilering here? Uh, we can. Uh, I'll give a spoiler warning to everybody for uh for Impact Winter. Um, you know, while we're still kind of in a vaguely spoiler free mm -hmm. area, I'll just say, go listen to them. They're free on Audible. They come with your subscription. Uh, the first two seasons are like 
five or six hours long each and then the third is i think it was like at eight or nine this one yeah. the, the mm-hmm, third one mm-hmm. um but they go very quickly and you will enjoy them so much you might be really upset with the ending to the second book but just start the third one because i promise uh a lot of your questions will be answered uh more or less <laughs> right away um so anyways yes please please go listen to these uh but that will be the end of our spoiler free section so yeah go ahead so so i was going to ask what kind of uh universe uh, does it share in a way and, and and to elaborate on that what i mean is impact winter season one is basically people in an outpost um surviving against the elements uh surviving against vampires and survive you know and like internal struggles as well and um uh, basically uh people within their own camp who actually have quite nefarious uh, plans or a very unpleasant people that need to struggle against. Yeah, that's and so then weird. on the other hand, in Impact Winter Three, there's a dragon. Like <laughs> there, it's it's like full on, mm-hmm. f- like fantasy almost. Like mm-hmm. you've gone full fantasy with that one. There's prophecies. There's castles in uh, you know Europe. They're globe trotting. Someone can turn into a dragon. There's the yeah. evil council. Some, you know, of, of vampires. It's all about the vampire, almost. Um, I don't want to say monarch, but the ruler, the bloodlands, which are yeah. you know now ruled by the vampires. Um, it's very much like a fantasy type thing. Mm-hmm. There's even a character in there called Bella, uh, who speaks mm-hmm. like that. Who I think Bella is a reference to Bella Lugosi, who famously mm. played Dracula in uh, the oh, okay. um, the nineteen thirties or um, nineteen thirty four, nineteen thirty three Hammer Horror Dracula, which is where you know you get the tradition that he was the guy with the widow's peak and the medallion oh, yeah. and the tuxedo, and he's like, "Listen to my Jew, you know, the children of the night, what music they make." <laughs> he's like your archetypal vampire thanks to his performance. And I feel like okay. the character of Bella is named after that guy and he does the actor and he does speak like that. Um, mm. So yeah, which which does it fit in with? Does it fit in with the Down to Earth season one or is it full on uh, vampire monarchy and dragons? I I would say both because in, in Empire yeah. of the Vampire, he uh, the main character like grows up in this monastery where they're all kind of like secluded out of the way in this monastery and they're learning how to kill vampires and they're the Silver Saints and they have these tattoos that are all uh, embedded with silver. And so their whole oh, body is cool. covered in silver. Yeah, and oh, they, they so cool. use that to protect them from vampires. And um, and yeah, they're, they're basically growing up in this monastery and you're getting like two different timelines. You're seeing, uh, his name is Gabriel, and you're seeing him grow up in the monastery and learn how to mm-hmm. kill these things. And you're getting the future timeline where it's him in his like, maybe early thirties and Mm -hmm. everything has gone to hell. And he's the last one of his, uh, silver saint brethren. That's alive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everybody else is dead. And he's, you know, seeking revenge on some of these high ranking vampires. And so you, you kind of get both. And especially in the, in the second book, empire of the damned, uh, you see significantly more, uh, fantasy things there is like these druid type people that can like change into animals and mm-hmm. there's vampires that can change into other things and it yeah it's it's all like very very similar and the vampires themselves uh there's some of them that look very human and very beautiful yeah. and then there's other ones that are like these gremlin looking bat things yeah. Um, and so you kind of have both of them, but but all of the vampires are very, very, very scary. They're not like they're not like vampire diaries, vampires in any way, really. Yeah. Um, <laughs> not Twilight so, vampires, not Twilight vampires. Um, and so you you get that. And then you also get um, it just kind of like this big 
branching story where there's like there's like a little bit of prophecy there's like mysticism there's uh and it's very very dark like oh and the the sky is blotted out so there's no sunlight so the vampires uh matter of fact it might have even been a meteor in empire of the vampire as well but somehow in in those books they they blocked out the sun so it's always nighttime Mm -hmm. um and so it's it's very very similar in those ways yeah Uh, definitely yeah yeah i think i think you'd really like it for sure i also found out from trying to wikipedia impact winter uh that um trying to find out about the series that um an impact winter is a real thing I thought it was just the name of it, but it's like a nuclear winter. Impact winter is a scientific, real scientific term. Uh, An impact winter is a hypothesized period of prolonged cold weather due to the impact of a large asteroid or comet on the Earth's surface. So it's like a real hypothesized thing. I I thought it was just a cool name um, for it. That's interesting. That's Um, really cool. Do you, what do you think of the vampires? Wait a minute. I'm really sorry. I'm used hmm. to hosting a radio show, and I feel like I've I slipped into host no, mode there. Please, so no, I apologize, we're, we're and I'm asking together. you the you questions. Go, no, you go ahead. I love it. <laughs> what do you think about the vampires in this? Because there are quite set higher like classes of vampire, hmm. like a video game almost, or yeah. a Dungeons and Dragons, where there's like you know, shades and anointed ones and great anointed ones and overlords, etc. And they all have different power sets and there's blighters at the bottom. Um, right. And also, when you... I, I find when I when you're dealing with fiction that is set in the modern times rather than a medieval kind of setting or historical type setting that deals with vampires, when you're dealing with modern set vampires, they have a tendency to have vampires based more as like almost science sci-fi vampires, like in mm. Blade, where it's a disease transmitted through the blood and like right. there's a chemical reaction to silver and that's why that's there. Um, but it's not like mystical. It's actually just like a disease that takes over the body. Um, yeah. But in this, it's very much like as it goes on. Oh, no, this is magic vampires. Like there's all this yeah. magical stuff. There's even like a, a well of life at one point right. in it. Yeah. Um, what do you think about the vampires and, and the choices they made in portraying them in this particular fiction? I I love it. I I love anything that mixes uh fantasy with like modern day. Uh like I love mm-hmm. uh the Dresden Files is one of my favorite probably my number one favorite series of all time. Mm-hmm. Um I love uh really really just anything that does that. I I read another recent book called uh, Recon uh oh man, I forget. It essentially was these Marines from the 90s Mm. that get stuck in like a fantasy hellscape kind of thing. And so I loved I loved the meeting of modern day with fantasy magic. And it's like what like are are guns even any more powerful than someone slinging a fireball at you? Like, you know, yeah, it it kind of brings up those things like what what is like actually um you know more more powerful in that way and so i i love i love the meeting of the two um and i i really liked these vampires i think that um maybe just because it had been a while since i had read the first and or listened to the first and second ones that i had kind of forgot about a lot of the uh, rankings um, mm-hmm. for them, like I like when they said like, oh, like an anointed one or like a shade. I was like, what? Mm-hmm. What's a shade again? What's an anointed one? And so it, it took mm-hmm. me a little while of like listening for for context clues. Um, and uh, and I've just looked it up. That book is called Doomsday Recon. It was very good. Right. I recommend people good check it out for a book. Yeah, um, but. I yeah I I really liked I liked these vampires I liked that um some of them are like significantly more powerful than others yeah. um and if, if you're the scion of someone who is very powerful then 
you can in turn get some of those powers even though you're a new vampire like felix uh yeah. earlier or like later on in the book he was able to take over the mind of another vampire who was older than him but mm-hmm. that was because he was darcy's scion and so i a lot of that stuff was was really cool um and i i think that the vampires were scary uh they were scary yeah. enough to you know not be some like dramatic human humanoid vampire although i i think i think this book had the perfect mix of that because i don't know if i would like i mean i'm sure i would enjoy it but i don't think i would enjoy a book as much if the vampires were straight up animals like i think vampires need to have some sort of human quality to them that feels like a little bit alien but also a Mm. little bit relatable for me to be like oh my god they're like terrifying um especially when like some of these vampires have like blood dungeons and they just like keep humans as like cattle and like that kind of stuff is like so like scary vampire but in order for that to in order for that to come across as scary they have to have a little bit of a human element to them otherwise they're just an animal eating there's just some wild beast that is eating humans and that's not as scary yeah what's the point what's the point in it being a vampire like you know there's 30 days of night um which um i i've not seen it since the cinema um but which marks out how old i am um but um with 30 days of night they are just these kind of like ravening they, they remind me of the zombies from 28 days later like running bloodthirsty yeah. and they do have intelligence to them but i'm like yeah. what's particularly vampiric about these kind of like mad obsessed you know they don't turn there's they don't turn into anything I, they, yeah they bite yeah. people and they turn but that's kind of like zombies do that and werewolves do that so what that's not right. like fully there is some there's got to be something a bit more refined and a bit more intelligent and and cunning yeah. about a vampire and th- like it should be a higher order of intelligence to a vampire right. i feel like um but yeah but having said that they do have the blighters in this so they have yes. the best of both worlds because they yeah. have the mad <laughs> vampires <laughs> but they also have like you know literally vampire royalty uh plotting yeah. um how they're going to control the world and stuff like that yeah yeah i love it i love having both because even the blighters um they're scary sometimes like especially in the first and and second book when when hope didn't quite know what she was doing up at that point and mm. these blighters would just like surround her and she would like frantically trying to like scramble away from these ravenous things um whereas if and i i think the the blighters worked better in those scenes because of hope's uh current like disposition at the time whereas if it had been like a, a vampire nobility that like cornered hope that wouldn't be as scary. There's something about like the frantic nature yeah. of the yeah. blighters that are scary in their own way. And so I, I think you're right. Like this book or uh, do I call it a book? I don't know <laughs> this audio drama. Uh, it has uh, yeah. it really has the best of the best of both worlds. And, uh-huh. and the, the writers of this thing can, can use it in whatever situation they need. Mm. Um, you know, like at the at the end of the book when or I guess not quite the end of the book, but Lydia turns into a blighter and mm. that was like really intense because yeah, because of just like the frantic, like snapping, like just yeah. ah, kind of animosity. It's one of my favorite parts. Yeah. Of the whole series. It's incredible. That part. Oh, I, f- I actually found nice. myself quite moved by it. Yeah. Oh, that's great! I love that. When she's dying, because she dies of an uh, she's dying of an aneurysm, right? Yeah, she dies of a brain aneurysm. Yeah, and as she's dying, and I genuinely found that really quite moving when she's dying as a, a an aneurysm. Fantastic acting, like tremendous acting from both of the people um, yeah. playing those parts. Um, really, really affecting. 
and then like the uh, you think because all the way through you when if someone needs to if someone dies they're like all right make them a vampire and they'll come back as a shade or an anointed right. one and you've basically got them back but in that that case in this case like yeah. the cruel twist is they pr- try and bring her back and like they and she does become a vampire but she becomes a blighter so she just becomes this yeah. mad horrific animal and at the time it's like maybe it'd be better if we just had let her died because right now she's just just this this thing this creature yeah. this like screeching monkey thing who wants to suck your blood out and isn't intelligent yeah. at all and i just thought it was a wonderful wonderfully cruel twist of fate and twist of the yeah. story there yeah that that was brilliant i was not expecting that at all mm-hmm. because i i i thought the same thing i was like okay so she's gonna come back as a vampire now and everything's mm-hmm. gonna be more or less hunky dory uh but i loved mm-hmm. the i loved the story arc of her turning into a blighter and then somehow she turns um i guess my dog um Aww. she turns into a back into a human um mm. and the book is never quite clear on on how that happened um but turns back into a human and the whole time that she's back as a human she's like i don't know like i've been having like these weird dreams and like these really like quiet urges that i haven't really been telling anybody about and like there's (laughs) just something is just off and she's trying to tell people and even penelope is like you are human you're fine you're fine Mm -hmm. and hope is telling her like no i have you back like you're fine you're fine and then at the very end of the book we yeah. get Lydia. She's got these two blood bags because they're about to go into the submarine. And so they're trying to give the vampires as much blood as, as they can to tide them over. And Lydia's like, they're not drinking any of my blood. What does my blood taste like to them? And she tries it and mm. it's sour. And yeah. she's like, well, what, what does hopes taste like? And she tries that. And Penelope, Penelope comes back in the room and Lydia's like, I tried some of Hope's blood. And she's like, so what? You tried a little bit of her blood. She's like, no, Penelope, I drank half the bag. Yeah, yeah. And it's just this moment of, fuck. Oh, <laughs> like, oh, man. It is yeah. so, it, that was such a good scene. I love, yeah. I love that little reveal. Because up until mm-hmm. then, up until that very moment, you're thinking as the reader, you're like, she's blowing this out of proportion. She went through something really traumatic. Yeah, she's and traumatized. She's, yeah, and she's like going through all this stuff. Um, and she it's 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 all in her head. It, it seems real to her, but it's all in her head. Um, but then at the very end, yeah, you're like, she drank half a bag of blood. Oh my yeah, god. Yeah. Like, oh. So when she comes back like so when she comes back as a human I actually thought I thought I thought it was like the water the magic water from Guernsey. Yeah. Um the well. I thought that's how they got her back. Um and then by using that water or realizing it can reverse vampires that's why they were like uh or hope was like oh I know I definitely can use that on Darcy then to try and turn her back. So I I thought that personally I thought the book did conclude you know conclusively say how she comes back as a human yeah i I think that's that's what it leads you to believe and that that might very well be the case but then at the end darcy is telling her because because uh hope throws the water at darcy and it doesn't do anything yeah that also might just be because she wasn't like submerged in the water um but then darcy tells hope she bleeds doesn't she from her head she 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 bleeds but then it like heals up um but darcy mm-hmm. tells hope she's like do you she's like do you honestly think it was the water do you not think that there's something in you that did it and hope's like what would i have oh, yeah, that yeah. would have done it and darcy's like mm-hmm. i don't know she's like i don't she's like i don't think some like random spring would do that there's something in you that did this 
And so yeah. maybe, but Darcy could also be wrong. It perhaps was just the spring and it's yeah. like this magical place where people can be healed. Um, but also I, I thought it was That's really interesting. That's not how payoffs work though, is it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and so I, I just, I found it interesting that Darcy brought it up more than one time Yeah, that she's like, do you really think that the water would do that? And I was like, mm -hmm. they're saying that for a reason. There's got to be, I don't yeah. know. Or, or it could be as simple as it was the water and it, it has healing properties, but mm -hmm. um what? But also, you you were right as well because I at the end that reveal, and I was I remember I was stood in the kitchen, and I I literally was like saying it out loud to myself because I didn't I just assumed they wouldn't bring this element of mythology in, but hmm. I I was like oh and I to be honest I'd forgotten this part of mythology, but I was like oh she's a vampire say it say vampire she's a vampire and I was like that is so cool that they've introduced a vampire into this uh mythology in my opinion so, she's definitely a vampire so is that is that like a half human half vampire yeah yeah okay. like blade yeah that's like okay, half human so. half vampire um yeah. and I, I feel like that's what she is i feel like she's a vampire and she that's has that's cool. she has the powers of the you know to some degree the powers and also like doesn't have the weaknesses of them as well so yeah i, I think it's so cool that they've introduced that because she seemed like, um, I mean, because she had been turned back into a human for yeah. months by the time mm -hmm. the end of the book was. And that was her first time drinking blood. So it, yeah. it seems like she definitely doesn't need a constant supply of blood, no. right? And they talk about it and they say, hey, weren't you keeping eating solid food? Because we yeah. can't, vampires can't keep solid food down and you were just right. narrowly munching away solid food. Right, right. But you love sucking that blood as well. Yeah, you do. <laughs> you do like that. <laughs> um, yeah, what a what a great reveal. That was that was fantastic. Yeah. I was just going to say, I think three really was the peak for me. It just keeps getting better and better. And I was like, I'm loving that this is just now full on fantasy, mm -hmm. mythological fantasy set in the modern day. I love it. Yes. It With was, a nuclear it submarine. Excellent. With a nuclear submarine. <laughs> And I, I think it just uh, it, it it ramped everything up really, really well. And there mm -hmm. wasn't a single part of the book where I was like, I don't know, like just like not entertained. Like there like the whole thing was so good. And I, I guess what I was about to say was that, you know, if we go to the top of this thing, you know, I, I introduced the book as retcon the novel because mm. uh, the the second uh, season of this thing, I really did not like. I mean, I, I liked it, but I was mm -hmm. really upset with some of the decisions that they made. Um, and if you go back and watch our episode, you'll you'll see us talk about it. Like we we enjoyed it because we love Impact Winter, but there was just some things where we were like, why did they make this choice? And one of those things was. Um, Darcy becoming this vampire queen mm. and we're we were kind of left feeling like well that's convenient isn't it like I, it's, <laughs> it was just like okay and we were looking forward to her being the uh you know the honorable warrior that was trying to take down these vampires and all of a sudden she's yeah. the bad guy and her and Felix had kind of just gotten together and like really been a thing for the first time and then hope had just gotten there and yeah. so we it, it didn't leave us with a great taste in our mouth um and so sure. when impact winter season three came around i was like well we'll have to see what they do with it like maybe hope is just like the main character now and and darcy's the bad guy mm -hmm. and i'm i'm so curious as to whether they saw like some backlash and like rewrote things to kind of retcon right. that a little bit, or mm -hmm. if this really was their plan the whole time, uh, because it is a good twist. Like even, even for the beginning of season three, you're kind of wondering like, is she really on the bad side? Like what's going on? Yeah. And it's, yeah. it's not until Felix shows up 
where you actually see her being like, I'm faking, I'm faking everything. Like, yeah. yeah. And, and that was like the first time you really find out for sure. Um, and so I'm like, I, I would be so curious to know if it was like a retcon thing or if this was their plan yeah. the whole time. It is. It does seem as well to be, um, I, at the end of impact winter two, I, I was like, cause the, she has the whole mind duel with, um, the queen and yeah. she comes out of it and you think she comes out of it as far as you're aware as the queen, the queen yeah. kind of, wins or no the queen doesn't win she realizes she is the queen and like right. we've always been the same person even before i was um uh you know a vampire i was the queen right. and they talk about very early on in impact winter 3 they talk about how um the queen had a contingency plan for her um yeah mind her personality her soul to live on and that's kind of like what darcy was um, right. So I, I I actually quite did like that because I was like, bloody hell, have they just made like the protagonist the body, like the big bad? Because that's like a hell of a switch. That's a very brave thing to do to go the big bad guy, the good guy, yeah. the main character, the main goody is now the big bad guy. I thought that was amazing. Um, but it also means that it allows Impact 23 to be re feel really fresh because it could have maybe got a little bit stagnant if they were still some people uh, palling around in the um, kind of wasteland. And it allows Impact Winter 3 to go into something being yeah. really quite uh, new by going, right, we're starting off at the... You know, we were like dealing with these low-level vampires and trying to find food to survive. Impact Winter 3 is like, we are at the literal highest level of the vampire uh, aristocracy of the vampire rulership. Like mm -hmm. we've gone right from the bottom to yeah. right to the top in this series. Um, and I thought that's probably yeah. why three is my favorite as well, because the decision allows it's a radical decision at the end. Um, I thought it was a perfectly fine decision. I, it works for me personally. I'm not against it. Um, mm. It didn't seem out of the blue. It seemed in keeping with the series. Um, but it also what it allows is to, it's to just a nice, quick, efficient way of going. We we can really mix things up now and put the yeah. main character in a drastically different situation um, instead right. of um, uh, in, instead of you know just keep slogging on to try and find the queen again. Right. Um, yeah. But that reminds me as well. Like it allows her to have different relationships with vampires as well like some one of my favorite aspects of impact yeah. winter 2 was her was the person who turned out to be the spy master because the actor was so good at being like oh poor little me farmer like oh i'll help i'll i'll help fix your car don't worry i'll That's take you right. up boat. oh no i consider it a debt oh i'm so sorry oh i feel yeah. so bad um, and Penelope was, I think it was Penelope was like, he does seem very contrite. Yeah. Like he, you know, yeah. he does seem genuinely sorry and he wants to help. And then for him to betray them, um, is a great twist and, and to be like yeah. the queen's spy master. Um, and then, and then you get to have the whole interactions between, uh, Darcy in series three and the spy master and all the other members of the vampire ruling elite as well, like her wife. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the wife. Yeah, she. What was what was her name? Uh, Fiducia. <laughs> um. Yeah, she. Yeah, she yeah. Was I think an so. Yeah. Interesting character. She. Um, did you enjoy the wife? I. I did. I don't know. I wouldn't say that she was like my favorite part of the book, but I did think that the the situation they were in was really interesting and I don't think Darcy handled it well at all because <laughs> it's like you you have this person that is expecting you to be you know it it means something a little bit differently to to vampires but in you know for all intents and purposes like she's the wife like she's yeah the spouse and like they they're supposed to be really close um, and they have one night together and then Darcy just kind of like 
pushes her off a little bit. And then Felix mm-hmm. comes through and she's like sharing her bed with, with Felix and everybody's yeah. like, this is like a little out of character. Like this is a this little is weird. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, Darcy, what are you doing? Like you just had to, you know, tell, tell Felix to go away or whatever. I'm, I'm glad that Felix ended up showing up in this season and, and had like a, a big role to play. Um, yeah. But at the same time, I was just like, Darcy, come on. Like, you, you were doing so well. And now you're yeah. just like, I, I think at that point, she had just gotten so comfortable with being the queen that she's yeah. like, I, I can get away with anything. And it's like, no, you're slipping up. <laughs> um, and uh, and it all it all worked out for the better. But um, mm-hmm. but yeah, I was I remember just being like, what are you doing? Like she's on to is, you. <laughs> is there? Um, I can't remember. Forgive me, but um, is there like a if in season two and three? Is she like? Is Darcy like bisexual or anything, um, or swing that way, or have any of those interests? Because if not, I can kind of totally understand why she's like. I don't really want to sleep with another woman. Like I'm not. Yeah gay i'm not bisexual i you know if if it was like me and and there was a and there was a king vampire and i had to be like um (laughs) they were like you get you gotta sleep with this and i'm like you expected to sleep with this dude and i'm like man the the stakes are very high here but i can totally (laughs) understand why it's like i'm not that ain't my bag. <laughs> Nothing wrong with it. You know, I don't care, but I can't get myself very excited for this prospect of having to <laughs> sleep with a bloke, uh, this bloke, this specific bloke to keep up appearances. So I can kind of yeah, <laughs> sympathize true. with you on that uh, on that level. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, she didn't have any, um, I don't remember any like bi uh, tendencies on her part. Mm-hmm. I know that mm-hmm. when she became a vampire, her libido like skyrocketed, but it, uh-huh. it never mentions that she is like bi or anything like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so it's like, yeah, I get it, and especially, uh, you know, having especially having Felix there, and um you know, just like show up all of a sudden and she's in like this desperate situation where her stress level has just got to be crazy. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm sure it was just like, yes, I finally have somebody by my side to yeah. be like in this with me. Um, it's a, it must be a great so I, comfort because that is the most alien yeah. of kind of like situations to be in. It's mm-hmm. like, I am literally in the, the absolute heart of the people that I am um, hate and want to destroy. Um, yes. And they would want to destroy me and they know, and, and they are suspicious of me anyway. So to have a, a committed ally back is like, Oh, thank God. Yeah, exactly. Thank God for exactly. Felix. <laughs> well, let's talk about Felix when, when Gabe gets here. Um, okay. Let's talk about, uh, we got Rook back. Yeah. Um, and that that's an interesting one because he uh he was presumed dead in in the second book after wasn't it a helicopter or something that fell and I can't remember I think exactly. so yeah I to be honest I listened to them in such quick succession they kind of slightly blended together. into one <laughs> yeah because yeah, I just was like done next it next immediate it was it wasn't <laughs> right. so much the next series starting the next series it was starting the next episode for me it was just like yeah. yep straight in next dude. one straight in yeah <laughs> uh, but yeah rook we thought was dead um and i'm yeah. glad to have him back because i like rook um, yeah everything about me or you know all of my normal tastes dictate i shouldn't like rook uh, because normally i don't mm. i'm not on board with characters that are like I am overtly mysterious, and I say I speak in cryptic ways. Uh, right, uh, you know, like you know what I mean, like that kind of yeah. archetype. Like there are things going on here that you cannot possibly perceive. <laughs> um, but I really love. I I really like Rook. I don't know if it's just the writing or if it's just the acting, but I really uh, I really enjoy Rook. Perhaps it's because everything else 
is so naturalistic uh, early on, especially in season one. Everything is so down to earth and chill, not chill. Well, chill in the temperature. Uh, right. Everything is down to earth and like low key in a way. Um, that to have this, I am like more of an archetypal vampire who's like all mysterious, and I imagine like covers his face with a cape now and then. Um, right. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's nice to have that kind of very classical vampire kind of thing in in amongst all of the the very real stuff. Yeah, I think I think he's good. He's because he was the he was the vampire that turned Darcy right, and then he yes. pairs up with Hope somehow in the second season, mm -hmm. um, and that's when they get separated. And I I really liked mm -hmm. the the showdown at the end. Um, where he like comes in and he's like, he he basically does the I'm getting too old for this shit kind of thing. Like, he, yeah, he yeah. comes in and he's like, he's like, I'm 1600 years old, and you've become the vampire queen. Like, you're gonna die. And it was uh -huh. a really good scene between the two where Darcy mm -hmm. is having to convince him that she is still Darcy and that sh her mission to go kill the queen um, still stands. And yeah. yeah, I thought, I thought that was fantastic acting um, from the both of them. Mm -hmm. I did notice mm -hmm. the Absolutely. thing that you were talking about where it's, you, you mentioned, it sounds like he has those plastic vampire teeth, like uh, in uh -huh. his mouth. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm, I, I heard mm -hmm. yeah, I heard yeah. that in the third one. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. I never noticed that before. Uh -huh. Was that prominent in the second book as well? Yeah, to me, it was. It almost sounds like he does have fangs in. <laughs> like, yeah. his fangs are always it's out. I don't know if that's... <laughs> a little bit, yeah. Um, but I quite like that, personally. Like, he does have his... Like, he's, you know, constantly constantly elongated i think he's right he's introduced as a, a an anointed one or a high anointed one um early on in um series one and that's why he's yeah. such a big bad deal in series one because he's the only yeah. anointed one or high anointed one that we know um or is he is he an overlord is that are they the same thing i'm not sure um he's, he's something very very high up um, yeah, and I think I think that's why there was that one lady that like came and visited him in yeah. either the first or second book, um, and she met Darcy and stuff. And I think uh, that was because he's like on this like very uh, high like elder council kind of thing, and she's like, "What are you mm -hmm. doing out here? Like, you need to come back yeah. and like do." Like big bad vampire stuff, yeah, um, yeah. And so I think, um, I so think that's kind. Of, yeah, yeah it works for me that he constantly has his fangs out in my head uh, because he he began as like he was kind of like built up originally to be the main villain, um, mm. you know, he, before Jep became kind of like the main yeah. villain. Um, so like to me, it was, it was part of selling he vamp, he, he powerful vampire, he bad guy, L right. listen to his fangs. Right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> what did, what did you think of Jep in that first book? I love Jep. I think he's great. Um, yeah, really I, well, no, villain. I think he's a dickhead. Um, sure. he's awful. Uh, <laughs> but I, I thought he was but a great, great villain. villain. Really, really good. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Um, the actor who plays him, uh, his uh, name escapes me off the top of my head. Uh, but uh, it's, uh, yes, Liam, he's he's... Liam Cunningham. Liam Cunningham. Yeah, he yep. he's a great actor. Anyway, he's quite a big deal himself. He was definitely one of. I think he was the biggest name in it. At, I think he so far still is the biggest name um, in it. Um, I know Sasha Darwin is uh, Felix, but you know Liam Liam Cunningham's. I think the biggest star so to speak or most famous recognizable person who's been in it and he really does pull his weight um i think he's absolutely phenomenal he plays that kind of like british survivalist uh you know very very well uh he he comes across as the caring father figure um you know he treads that line between 
he's just like this because he's looking out for Darcy. Um, and, oh, actually, but he is also a complete bastard at the same time. Like, I think right. he, he really does. He treads that line very, very nicely uh, with his acting. Um, right. And the writing as well uh, does that credit, that kind of like, is he the stern colonel? Because, you know, I like him to begin with because I like characters like that who don't take yeah. any shit and are like, stop messing about. You're going to get us all killed. Um and he's ready to just like go like nah these are scum and you have to exterminate every last one of them. Um right. so yeah, I, I really like Jep. What about you? Yeah, I, I thought he was a great villain. Um and it was kind of like it, it was a really nice twist when you think that this person who you look at and you're like, Yeah, he's he's really stern and he's not very like um he's not like a comforting person, but he's someone that's always looked mm. out for Darcy and hope and, and all this stuff. Yeah. And you kind of, you, you gradually go from that way of thinking to, Oh my God, this guy is a monster. Like the, yeah. like this is wild. And he just becomes such a awful, terrible, bad guy. Um, yeah. but like, so good. Like I loved, I love just like he hearing his lines and also just him getting his comeuppance. Like it was all so satisfying. Yeah. Um, he was, also, um, he's, he, he's, he's uh, well, I was going to say you raise a good point when, you know, you say he's not likable. He's like, he's not likable, but he's the guy who's going to keep you all safe. So it doesn't yes. really matter. Um, right. But he's not going to keep you all safe. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. Um, did you know that Bella Ramsey played Whisper? Oh, really? No way! Yeah. I had no Isn't idea. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that yeah. wild? Yeah, that I just found amazing. that out uh, yesterday. Um, wow. And uh, yeah, I was I was really surprised. I really liked Whisper. I was, uh, mm -hmm. as you guys would say, gutted when <laughs> she died. Um, that was that was brutal that was that was a tear jerker for sure yeah that that, that was pretty was... brutal actually oh my god that that was tough that was tough yeah people tend to make it through um in this N no offense to the audio drama but people do it doesn't have a particularly high turnover rate if someone sure. dies you know if, if if either people narrowly escape or they die and they're probably going to be turned into a vampire um, right. and come back um so when when someone does die uh, like whisper it, it's it's really um it's it's really affecting and the fact that she dies protecting felix um and she just literally has his back and he doesn't even know that she's dead um and mm -hmm. he turns round to find that she's died and she's protected him from people who were coming from behind is um, yeah yeah very very powerful Especially because oh, he man. basically has ignored everyone else's advice to not not go and find Darcy, and then um, and then whispers like, "Nah, he might be an idiot, but he's my idiot, and I'm going to go and look after him." Yeah, exactly, exactly. I guess what I have a note here. What did what did you think of the music uh, in in these things? I thought it was so cool that they had like licensed music but they were covers yeah. they weren't like the original artists but they're, they're yeah. music that you can actually look up and, and listen to it's pretty oh, cool. oh really yeah uh i didn't know that um that is very cool i i liked it i mean it's it's not what i would normally listen to um mm -hmm. because i am a very narrow-minded metalhead who just listens <laughs> to heavy metal um yeah. and uh if the producers of the show are listening to this by all means, throw in some heavy metal. There's lots of vampire metal for you to listen to out there. I'll give you yeah. some pointers. Um, but um, yeah, I, I really liked it. It gave it the um, feeling of being a modern, um, one of them HBO style prestige yeah. television shows uh, where they often end with a different song that suits the episode rather yes. than just this is the theme tune it's the end of the show so here's right. the theme tune that's how we do things around here um right. so yeah it gave it the it elevated it to feel like a really like a prestige tv show to me right yeah exactly exactly i i loved 
Um, I think it's, I think it's in the first season, um, and Hope goes out with her friends, and they're like, mm -hmm. "We're all gonna become vampires or whatever." So like, let's mm -hmm. all just like drive out into the wilderness and wait for the vampires to come and bite us. Like that would be so yeah. cool. And they're all like gothy, like emo kids kind of out there. And, um, and sure enough, she's like, <clears throat> she's sitting there and her friends are all around and these vampires just come out and swarm them. Yeah. And it's like ripping them apart. And she's like sitting in the car, like just watching it all happen and Elliot Smith's uh, Between the Bars comes on. And that's like uh -huh. a very slow, uh, like it sounds sad, but it kind of has like, if you listen to the lyrics, it's like, it's about holding someone close and keeping them safe. And like, I like, like, mm. I'll keep you still and like, I'll, I'll still your beating heart and all this stuff. And it goes so well with. Yeah someone's loved ones getting shredded by vampires or like getting yeah. drinking by vampires. Cause like you, you hear all these like gurgling sounds of like people getting their throats opened up and their blood drank and Elliot Smith's mm -hmm. just like, I'll keep you still like, Oh, it's just <laughs> such a good, like, Oh, so it, just, good. it yeah. goes together so well. And I, I noticed that with a lot of these, uh, a lot of these songs like i loved um at the beginning of season three uh lydia and hope are like sitting on the bed or something and and hope is listening to some like very poppy like upbeat song and lydia kind of makes fun of her for it and i i just loved how they were able to use music in yeah. the audiobooks both in a way to like you know how you would normally see it in like a TV show where there's just like a a good a good score to go with whatever's happening on screen um but yeah. also they're using it where the the characters are interacting with this music like in in the way yeah. of like a, listening to the radio or or something like that mm -hmm. um because it, 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 it is easy for a audio drama or something to be strangely devoid of music because, it, you know, music is such an enormous part of our lives. It's almost omnipresent. Um, mm -hmm. It's in so many things. But because of licensing issues, yeah. you won't get it a lot in audio dramas because it costs a fortune. Um, so right. it, audio dramas can sometimes be oddly devoid of something which is so very human, especially yeah. in something um where it's about humans humanity yeah. versus non-humanity and inhumanity uh yeah. like um like this it's like well hu music is something that's so human and and to not have it there it's a bit incongruous so the fact that they do have music there music that you can go and listen to licensed music um really really like adds a layer of believability adds it adds so much to it when it comes to making a world that you really think yeah. di does exist and, and was like our world until the meteor hit. Right. Yeah. Because the, especially with music probably being so scarce af in this apocalypse, you know, it's something that is yeah. almost kind of precious where they, they only, they only have it if they have like a CD or something like they don't, they can't go on Spotify or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and so mm -hmm. to, to bookend every chapter with like just a little piece of music is, uh, is such a nice touch. I, I think it's fantastic. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. But speaking of music and stuff like that, the uh, you know, we, we talked about sound earlier and mm -hmm. there's this scene where, hope is going to run down this corridor and get all the vampires to chase her and she's going to go through a back entrance and somebody else is going to yeah. light a match that will blow them all up and lydia mm -hmm. decides to be the one to run instead to like have them yeah. chase her and i love this moment where like literally nothing is being said uh well mm -hmm. Maybe that's not true. Maybe there's like a couple things that are said, but for the most part, it's just the sound of this match. And she's trying to, mm -hmm. a, as Lydia's running through this hallway and you hear the screams and everything, 
like mm-hmm. just hope is frantically trying to light this match and it's not mm. working it's not working and then you hear the click of the match breaking yeah and yeah. it's just like oh my god like the, <laughs> the way the way they used that sound was so good i was just like oh man yeah. i remember during that scene i was like walking my dog uh it was like late at night and i was walking him and I remember, like, during the moment where she's, like, frantically, like, trying to think, trying to strike the match, uh, Hank and I just, like, stopped on the street. And I'm just, like, standing there, like, listening to it because it was so, it was so <laughs> intense. I just, like, completely stopped yeah. moving and I had to, I had to hear it. It was so good. Yeah, it's like a full-on um, action scene, isn't it? Like, it's almost yeah. like just the soundtrack to it's like they've just done an action there's an action scene in the film and they've taken the action scene uh s- like sound and just played it and it still somehow works exactly i do love this moment at the end when uh Kirshian, uh calls darcy's bluff and yeah. she knows that felix is in the room because at the time darcy was like felix is missing we don't know where he is uh, and then mm-hmm. uh, Darcy says to Kershaw and she's like, do you have any uh, information about Felix's whereabouts or whatever? And she's like, yeah, he's behind the curtain over there. Yeah. And Darcy's <laughs> like, oh, shit. And everything kind yep. of all comes crumbling down. Um, mm. And I love this. Uh, I love this, like, ramping up to to kind of the final act where. Kershian officially knows what Darcy is and she knows that the queen is like asleep somewhere um, and kind of this frantic uh, like at the end you you really don't know like who you can trust and and who you can't and I I love that whole uh, Mm -hmm. that whole bit Um, yeah yeah I it felt quite Game of Thrones uh, yeah, it did. It it did have um, a lot of Game of Thrones uh, vibes to it where people are like backstabbing each other. You don't really know yeah. who's on what side. And it's it's all mm-hmm. a little bit a little bit funky. And um, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I had Pal- a really, really palace good time politics. Palace politics. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Yeah. And like keeping up appearances and like trying to second guess how other people re- will react to whether or not you you attend a certain funeral and whether or not you should even be at a certain funeral and stuff like that. Um, yeah. Right. And like trying to work out if it's acceptable for Felix to be um, there or whether or not they should just like balls it out and just be like no it's more believable that if i'm the queen i would just go like no you all have to accept felix is going to be here now as as my as my bloke right exactly yeah and and you know i i was gonna i was gonna wait for gabe to talk about felix but i am not exactly sure Mm -hmm. where he is so let's let's go ahead and talk about him a little bit because i Mm mm-hmm I have I have some feelings about Felix, uh, especially in the third book. So I'm I'm curious what okay. your read on him was, uh, or if or if you enjoyed him mm-hmm. as a as a character. I did. I like Sasha Darwan as an actor. Anyway, um, mm. I um, so in the second series, no, okay, yeah, I think it might be the second series. Yeah, I found him a bit wet. Like a bit mm-hmm. of a sad sack, a bit like, yeah. oh, you're so good. And like, I'm a bit like, and you know, to be fair, mm-hmm. if your girlfriend's like, oh, I can fly now. Um, yeah. <laughs> you are probably going to feel a bit like inadequate. Emasculated. Um, yeah, a bit emasculated, a bit, <laughs> bit like, um, I'm not really sure what I bring to this uh, anymore. Um, right. But... Um, I th- I really enjoyed yeah, but I still enjoyed him, and and it was a realistic arc for him to go through, um, and I thought the acting was good, and it, it did make a lot of sense, um, and I think it paid off nicely with series three, where essentially you know they he was able to kind of like reclaim some power and a- discover agency again by being 
in a way, by being like not much of a threat. And that's exactly why he can move around the palace and get close to people uh, and why people are going to underestimate him. Yeah. What about yourself? Yeah, I, I did. I did like that. You know, he he had something to do. Finally, he had something that mm-hmm. was like his mission, because I feel like in the previous mm. books, he didn't really have a lot going on. He was kind of just following Darcy around and he like just wasn't uh he just he just didn't have any sort of like real purpose to the story other than just being right. a love interest um and and you know in a lot of the books i read i have the same problem with uh some of the the women in those books that are written in the same way where like oh she's just the love interest she's not meant to be mm. like any she's not meant to be like a real person. She's just meant to be there for like the main character. And yeah. I feel like it kind of flip flops with Felix in this. I feel like he doesn't really have a lot of his own agency. And I think that um, the, the thing that I really don't like about him is that he is kind of uh, um, the only way I can really put this into words is like very uh <laughs> there's a terminology that's floating around the internet right now called beta male <laughs> and, <laughs> and and look i don't i don't i don't think your your male characters need to be like this alpha you know chad male you know gruff kind of guy who's like good at fighting and all this stuff yeah. um you know, if, if you if you look at books like the King Killer Chronicles, uh, Quoth is not an alpha male by any means. Matter of fact, a lot of the times he's described as very uh, effeminate in a lot of ways. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, but he has a purpose. He has a way to solve his own problems. He's capable and he he can get things done if he sets his mind to it. And I sure. just don't feel the same way about Felix. <laughs> right. <laughs> I think I think I I rolled my eyes so hard when he was like um okay, a couple times. So he gets into the castle and yes, Darcy Yeah, and and I wish we had been able to see that because that would have been cool. It was cool seeing him just show up, and that was a fun surprise. But it's like, Mm -hmm. man, I really could have used the scene where he cleverly worked his way into the castle, or maybe he scaled one of the walls with like a rope or something. That would have been awesome. Um, Mm -hmm. But we, we see him show up, and then Darcy tells him, She's like, okay, I'm so happy you're here, but also you have to be on your A game and you have to act like you are the scion of the queen of vampires. Like you have to yeah. act like big dick swinging tough <laughs> shit, like nobility, yeah. like you are nobility and you have to act like it. Yeah. First scene, the very first scene we get with him after that, he gets a vampire coming up to him, basically just asking, hey, what's your name? Who are you? And he's like, uh, um, um, um I don't know. Uh, uh, uh. It's like, dude, get it together. She just told you that you have to be on your A game and you're acting like a shy schoolgirl. Like, what are you doing? Um, and so, yeah, that that just threw me for a loop. Uh-huh. I was like, what are you doing? And then... Uh, later on, I, I rolled my eyes extra hard when he's sent out on a mission, (laughs) he's sent out on a mission, um, and he's talking to people in the town and trying to get information. He's trying to find out about, I think that's what he was trying to find information on was the scion of the other vampire that got beheaded. Um, he's trying Mm -hmm, to like mm -hmm. track her down and all this stuff. Um, and then sure enough, he's making progress and you're like, oh, maybe he is kind of capable. You're starting to feel like he has his Mm. own agency and that he has these connections and he's working as like a spy master. And it's like, okay, maybe he's able to do something. 
And yeah. then sure enough, this motherfucker gets captured. And if it weren't <laughs> for whatever like special ability he has, uh, he would have gotten staked through the heart. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's just like, God, can you, can you give him just a little bit of <laughs> capability? Like, can he, can he just have just the slightest amount of cool factor? Like whatever that is, can he just have a little <laughs> bit of it, please? Cause, oh, is that man, the scene that... though where he's like saying, is that the scene where he's having a conversation with the actual spy master and he's like, well, I'm the queen's scion like or that was later he gets on. a special job title doesn't oh is it okay yeah he, he has a special job yeah. title yeah yeah he later on he does do kind of a cool thing where where he gets caught by the spy master and he's like you shouldn't be in here and felix is able to use some sort of like mind magic to erase his mm. memories of him being there but earlier on he's talking to like this guy at the tavern who like sells shady like drugs and alcohol and stuff and he's giving him little mm -hmm. bits of information and he's like hey i think i think i could take you to to meet this other contact or whatever and by this point the wife uh Vidushia, has mm -hmm. realized that something mm -hmm. weird is going on um and so this tavern owner takes him to this other contact and he gets ambushed and just like taken out like immediately. And yeah, mm. it was, it was just one of these moments where I'm like, man, can he, can he do anything aside from just being like the <laughs> bumbling boyfriend? Like, Oh man, I would, I would love to see him in a, in a better role than the one he's uh the one he's been given for sure. But you can't blame him for trying. I, I'm admittedly, I was like, I would not feel so, if someone said to me, if he went like, if, if that bartender said to me, you got to put a bag on your head, me, I'd be like, nope, I'm not going, I'm out, mate. I'm, I am out ski. Right. Um, I know. Anytime, whereas... anytime somebody <laughs> says, Hey, you need to put a bag on your head. You need to think <laughs> twice about <laughs> what your options are here. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, you know, at least he had the bravery to do that. I, I would be like, no, nah, I'm not doing that, mate. I'm not putting a bag on my head. Mission failed. I am not <laughs> yeah, going. Mission failed. <laughs> you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll get my information from, uh, from somewhere else. I'm yeah. sure I can figure this out another way because bag on I the head take is, the is L no on this one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He, he even asks him, he's like, well, how, how far are we going? Like, because if you, if you're putting yeah. a bag on my head, I don't want this thing on my head for like hours. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I like him. I like him personally. Um, uh, yeah. I, I, I quite like having a, just a, a bit of a loser <laughs> really <laughs> like, um, <laughs> You know, and, and obviously, you know, I think there was a, a strong theme in there. Um, I did like the strong theme of it being like, right, you're not a fighter, but that's not why you're important. You're the refuge and you're the one yes. who like restores and Darcy is the fighter and, and your role is very important, but your role is not the traditional the masculine role. Uh, right. Your role is that of the refuge and you're the one who's like basically allows her to um recuperate restore yes. get her energies back make her feel well enough to fight again essentially and i right. did i did like that he discovers That's... and he becomes that arc where he becomes okay with that role for himself that that's a really good point because you're right. There's been times where I've I've seen like a, a female character and and thought the same thing where it's like you're you're not like a fighter or anything, but you are the refuge for either the main mm. character or for the rest of the crew. Maybe you're more in like a, a like a motherly role, or maybe it is more of a romantic yeah. role. Um, and so I, I I guess that's that's true. I I do see him as uh, more of a refuge for. Um, for Darcy and I do he's a support do, class yeah he's a support class exactly he's the uh he's the <laughs> bard or the or the healer uh um, yeah yeah <laughs> but uh but yeah I 
I do like the romance between him and Darcy. I love the idea of being like childhood friends and, you know, kind of sticking it out through all of this. Um, and I especially yeah. loved one of my favorite scenes from the second book was Darcy uh, when they were doing all that weird, like multiverse, like timey, wimey stuff. And oh, here's Gabe. What's up, fuckers? Hello, Gabe. What up? How's it going? Um, good. We're just talking about Darcy and Felix. Oh, hi, Gabe. And uh, but I, I did love the scene. Hi. How are you, RJ? <laughs> I'm all right, thank you. How about yourself? Good, good, good. You still have that weird delay going good. on, huh? Yeah, sorry yeah, about that. Yeah, he's got a little bit of a yeah. delay. Oh, it's That's all good. Okay. It's all good. I've I've just been like saying something yeah. and giving it a couple yep. seconds for him to reply. <laughs> totally. Totally. Um, <laughs> but I I did I did like the scene in the in the second season where Darcy is like going through all this. It's when the queen is in her head and she's going through all this weird, like multiverse stuff. And she basically gets to mm -hmm. live out a human existence with Felix. I, I really like yeah, that. Yeah. Wasn't it like, wasn't it? Yeah. Didn't, didn't oh she yeah. Say that was it, good. Yeah. Didn't she say it was, uh, it was not her memories, but the queen's memories, like, like maybe something that she had experienced, you know, way back when except um, it was inputted as darcy you know maybe the queen had a love back then oh. and or like you know a normal i don't know that's the way i understood it but yeah i think i i think definitely some of them were but the the queen had lived like thousands of years before darcy oh. and so i like yeah maybe it like translated it over i i really there's so much of the second book that i've completely forgotten oh um, i i listen to all three Oh, back did you? Back, nice. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, I, I wish I had done that. Um, that was originally my plan, but I was like, there was part of me that was like, I, I had so many problems with the second season that yeah. I'm like, I really just want to go into the third yeah. season. That's fair. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I, I guess we can kind of catch Gabe up on a couple things. Um, I really loved this third season. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I thought it was excellent. I it it fixed everything mm -hmm. that I had problems with in the second season, and I'm not sure if that was like an intentional retcon or if that was just like their plan all along. Um, but either way, I think that the the third season, uh, I think it's the best yet, and I think it it fixed all my issues with the previous one. Yeah, I would probably tie up. I would probably tie the first one and the third for yeah. dominance in my mind. Yeah, because the first one, the first one was really cool. Yeah, um, and so nostalgic. So nostalgic, and I always say this about you know, I guess the starting point of a story. I really enjoy that first you know look into mm. when nothing else is really known, but you meet the characters and kind of meet their their stripe where they're at and stuff. Yeah. Um. Mm -hmm. but yeah, third. It was awesome, dude. I really enjoyed that. I listened to it all day today at work and oh it was, really it was oh wonderful. nice yeah they're only oh, like cool. it's only like four hours uh you know well it depends on what speed because at at one at one speed it's like a nine hour audiobook yeah i think i was at like 1.7 or 1.8 but oh, okay yeah wow you were zapping yeah. through it doesn't everyone sound like a chipmunk though <laughs> yeah you know what they they do uh to to anybody that has that's not used to it because i i that's normal to me now if i were to slow it down to like one time like right. normal speed, it would just be like so weird uh -huh. my my wife in the car i'll listen to my book sometimes and i'll she'll be like why are they talking so fast I'm like they're not she's like yeah they are they're i can't even understand a word they're saying <laughs> so yeah wow. i don't know but with with these books specifically does the do the sound effects not get super skewed or or messed up or anything like the little like footsteps and yeah, stuff Yeah not not for me. I mean maybe like the footsteps sound a little quicker, you know, like mm. stuff like that, but it it didn't bother me like I knew I knew what they were saying and right. what they were trying to do. Um That's cool. Mm. It's more just the talking. If I go any slower than like 1.4 like the talking just feels so slow, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I was telling mm -hmm. I was telling RJ earlier that um, I kind of I I put the speed the the speed that I put it at is dependent on 
what the narrator is doing. Yeah. yeah. Um, and usually the better the narrator is, the slower speed I listen at. And, um, but still the very slowest I can do is like 1.2. I don't yeah. think I can ever go back to like one, one time speed. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's weird. Just... Have you ever, have you ever tried it? Have you ever just like, yeah, oh yeah. Dude, it's weird, mm -hmm. huh? Whenever, oh. whenever I switch from your account to my account, yeah. it like resets the speed. Oh, so whenever you I'll... start something, it's on one time. <laughs> yeah. And I'm <laughs> yeah. like, what is this? Yeah. <laughs> it's weird. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we were just getting to the part where we were about to talk about, uh, like kind of Darcy at the end, um, like springing the trap and everything and kind of making their way to the, the submarine. But did you have any other, um, any like favorite moments, Gabe, from like, yeah. the beginning or the middle of the yeah, book? Yeah, I will just say my favorite storyline probably was Hope and uh, yeah, um, Penelope Lydia. and Lydia. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, that was my favorite to listen to in that whole. I'm sure you guys have already talked about the resurrection and all that stuff um yeah yeah that was when i texted you i was like oh my god i'm crying at work dude when lydia yeah. came back to life this was no like a way. week ago but i had like yeah. listened to it yeah dude yeah i was like that was yeah awesome yeah um, dude but yeah I, a lot. <laughs> I do i do i will not argue that, <laughs> argue that. <laughs> that's very healthy yeah very masculine yeah, yeah. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, I'm yeah, not even taking I... the piss. That is that is healthy. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Oh yeah, I I totally agree. Yeah. I think that um we've we've talked about this a lot on the podcast, but I think that uh I really and maybe this is just growing up in in the culture of just America, whatever. But I don't feel super comfortable like crying in front of people. Yeah, I wouldn't but... say I I feel comfortable with that mm -hmm. either. Like yeah, I, I'm comfortable but, with myself crying. Like I do uh -huh. do it. Not like I wouldn't say a lot, but like if I see a sad video, I'm probably gonna start crying. Like it's just how. It yeah, goes. exactly. Yeah. And I and I feel like books, mm -hmm. books for me. Uh, you know, people. It's kind of a running joke on the podcast yeah, that Spencer's, I cry at a lot Spencer of books. Gets a little choked up. I, I, uh... I get choked up all the time from books, and I think that books are like a almost like a safe environment to like express that kind of emotion for me. I don't oh, know. Totally. Totally. Yeah. Um, I'll be but right yeah, the... why is that? Cause you're, you're by yourself. Yeah. Like by myself and the, I, I know, Hmm. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it, but I think it's because like the story isn't real. And so it's not something that's like, like, it's not like, it's not like a real emotion in that moment because it, it's not like my dog just died or something. You oh, know what I, I mean? see what you're it's, saying. It's it's emotion it's like without a, like yeah. like real consequence on your. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, that's mm -hmm. exactly what I was trying to say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, real crying sucks. Real crying sucks. Yeah. Crying out something sad that you see or whatever, but like, yeah, if you're yeah. crying because a dog died, that shit sucks. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, it does suck yeah it's terrible but anything bad happening to a dog so... yeah exactly yeah exactly exactly, exactly. <laughs> um we we were just talking about felix and i called him a beta male uh because <laughs> he's he's just he's like getting captured and he doesn't have anything to do really yeah that, um that's and he's fair. always he's that. always messing up <laughs> another thing i thought was funny too is he's kind of like i I, I wouldn't call him like a simp. Maybe I would, but there's a lot of a lot of scenes like where like Darcy's like, oh yeah, I just I just fucked this person. He's like, feel like yeah, oh, I you know circumstances, I guess. That standing. that is a tough that is a tough situation. <laughs> yeah, isn't it? it's yeah. tough because I don't I don't think I could yeah. I don't think I'd react yeah. like that. You know, I don't think I could. I know. I mean, like eventually, I would hope that I could understand like yeah. how complex everything else what's going on like maybe that was required it was something that had to happen or it would all fall down you know i but still, i I'd think be like, god damn it dude yeah i some i think normally that, yeah that's, right some people are some people are yeah but i, I don't think <laughs> they were though and i think that normally no. i would have i would have judged that situation like really harshly like oh i guess darcy is able to just go off and have sex with whoever she wants but I like that she addresses it in a yeah. way where she's like, 
she's like, no, this was wrong. And I'm so sorry that yeah, I had to do this. Like, but I don't to want to do like, this. He was catching yeah. on or whatever else. Yeah, that's a good mm -hmm. point. Right. She was always and, super good about that. Like, yeah. And sure even he Felix, like, you know. Yeah, exactly. And, and even even Felix was like, he's like, it's tough, but you are in a completely yeah. unique situation. Yeah, he did he's better like, than I you're, Right? Yeah. yeah, he did a great job with that. And I... I really, I really, really like that that got addressed the way that it did. Yeah. Because it was, it was this thing where it's like, okay, we're just gonna put this all out on the table. Like Darcy's not hiding anything from him. Yep. She's not being weird about it. She's just like, this is what I had to do to survive. Yeah. And uh, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I really, it, and it, it speaks really highly to their relationship, right? Like it, it speaks. Highly to their like trust of each other, I think. Very healthy vampire cuckoldry. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Vampire exactly. queen cuckoldry. I like that. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> out, outside of that, uh, outside of that scene, I was like, "All right, Felix is kind of a wet blanket in this in this." Uh, season he's just not yeah, doing much I, yeah i would i would agree i think the cool part about felix's character is it how like how happy it made darcy i guess i think that was kind of a cool thing you know she was always like like he was the first one to realize she was faking the whole thing you know right yeah and he right. didn't think she was mm -hmm. blah yeah. blah blah and then he finds out sh she is and like they're both so ecstatic you know and, and then felix right. is like her little secret for a while because nobody knows mm -hmm. what's going on and so I don't know. Yeah. I think that was he was a really cool accessory, you know, for Darcy. Mm -hmm. um, right. I liked his character. Mm -hmm. I thought I thought he was fun. Like I had a good time with him. Sure. This. Uh, yeah. This book, but. R R J had brought up a good point where he was saying, you know, Felix isn't the like the warrior character. He's more of like the refuge for. Yeah. Darcy. Yes. That's a great great point. Great point. Yeah. Okay, so we talked about some of the main some of the main plot points. We talked about you know Lydia uh, becoming a blighter um, and then getting turned back to human. That was a whole thing, and then Maybe. of course at the end she's like a yep. half vampire or something. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. but we we get to the scene where we find out that Vidushia is setting up a trap for Darcy and her sister. And this was such a brilliant move because there is no way out for Darcy. The way that Vedusia has set this up, she knows that um, she, she has Penelope as a prisoner and she's made it so that if Darcy tries to save Penelope, everyone will be like, well, you're just saving someone from your previous life. Like you are... If you are mm. the queen, then you wouldn't care about yeah. this Penelope character. You would just let the axe fall. And so there's that part of it. But then also, Vedusia knows that Hope and Lydia, the two girls that are missing when they uh, you know, arrested Penelope, she knows they're going to show up to either try to kill Darcy or to try to like save her yep. or something or to try to save Penelope. Yeah. And so either way, Vedusia is going to have everyone right where she wants them. Yep. And if Darcy tries to like, let's say that in the moment, uh, you know, Darcy is going to let the ax fall or she's going to this thing and hope shows up and she's like, you know, if there's any sort of interaction between Darcy and Hope, then they will know that Darcy isn't what she says she is. And so it was yep. just in, in every possible way, Darcy is completely fucked. Yep. And so I love this yeah. moment where she's like about to let the axe fall. She gets hit with the water and... Um, I forget what exactly happens from there. Oh, Hope Hope comes running with her sword. Yeah. And she, she clashes with Darcy, and she sees yeah, in Darcy's both, eyes that she's that still... She's faking, and then they both turn mm -hmm. and start attacking yes. everybody else. Yes! Was cool. That was such a good scene. So good. I love... 
I love them just being at like cross yep. swords and then realizing it and then just turning back to back on everybody else. Yeah. Just ready to completely let loose. Yep. For sure. And I was like that. That was one of the more badass scenes uh, Did you guys... in the book. This is this is not well. Maybe maybe you've already talked about it. Maybe not. But did you guys have issues with the weird magic they had in here? Like the kind of the really not what you think. Like for instance, she's a dragon. I thought that was kind of funky. And then also the the well of life. I thought that was also kind of funky. You know? Yeah. Because I thought it was just like vampires, but it's a lot more than vampires. Yeah, I'll I'll let RJ take that one because we were kind of talking about that earlier. Yeah. So I personally really enjoyed that it just suddenly turned into a full on fantasy. Yeah. Um, because they laid the groundwork with um, vampires being definitively mystical in this and magical. Like uh, we were saying earlier, how, like, in modern things that have vampires that are set in the modern day or in modern often day. are, you know, have vampires treated in a yeah scientific uh way yeah. where they're like in blade where they're like a virus and like yep. it happens to yep. align up with mythological virus, things yeah. like they have a chemical biological reaction with silver and and garlic and stuff yeah um so i, I you know and i like that as yeah. well but i did like how this was very much like now nah, these are magical vampires like this is proper full-on mystical vampires um, yeah so for magic, it to yeah. go into full-on fantasy yeah, and and to have that you know fountain of eternal life uh, in Guernsey or wherever it was in the middle of the um, the channel um, Adriatic, yeah, uh, yeah. I I just thought it. I I just really enjoyed it. I was like, yeah, why not just throw some more elements at this? Like, this is a really fresh yeah. series. Um, it's not just we're in the middle of like England, like trying to survive anymore. We're like globe trotting. We're suddenly gone from the lowest of the low in the wasteland to the highest uh, echelon. Can't get any higher of vampire society. And I was like, yeah, just put a dragon in as well. Why not? Yeah. They already turn into <laughs> other animals, yeah. which is like totally enough. Totally. You know, like they already yeah. turn into wolves and, and what have you. So I was like, yeah, put a monster in there. Put put like a giant dragon in there. Why not? Yeah. You know. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's 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 a because fair, like fair we point. have the myths and legends. We we have the myths and legends of vampires turning into wolves and stuff like that and bats. So it's like, I like the fact it marries another legend, which is like the legends of you know. There's a universal legend of the vampire, but we also you know many cultures have vampires independently of each other, yeah. and many cultures have dragons independently of each other. So I, I quite like mm -hmm. that it was like, well, why not link the two since they pop up independently of each other yeah. in separate cultures? Both these things, why not? Maybe it makes sense in a way that these two things are linked. Um, so here's a dragon. So I, I, yeah, I quite yeah. liked it personally. <laughs> yeah, no. That's, I, that's, that's when I say very... quite liked it, I liked it a lot. <laughs> that's a good point. That's a that's a really good point. Yeah, I, I didn't like, I didn't dislike it. I was just, I guess, surprised with the, with how yeah, uh -huh. do, like deep they dove into it. But that's a really good point. You know, I, I like yeah, because because mm. otherwise it seems like such a grounded vampire yeah, series, exactly. right? Yeah, exactly. Until, until, you know, these miracles yeah. and all this, but then it but then like yeah. RJ said it makes sense, you know? Like the Yeah. it makes sense if you really think about it. And I and I feel like it ramped up pretty evenly like yeah, where it the wasn't, first yeah. book Yeah. The 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 first book being very grounded and then the second book we're introduced Getting to some like kind a of prophecy weird mind powers and, and prophecy, yep, yep. Mind powers, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then with the third book just going all out. Right. Um yeah <laughs> i i'm i'm really excited to see what they do with the fourth book because oh, it man. seems like it's yeah, gonna get the ending even crazier of this, the ending of this book kind of really set the stage for the craziness that will come mm. right because yeah we I get mean, on a nuclear um, submarine going to the arctic to like what the mm -hmm. what holy crap dude. yeah Wait, i didn't even think right? they had i was surprised they had cars no here's a nuclear i know submarine. yeah <laughs> here's a nuclear <laughs> submarine you know yeah yeah <laughs> that's true 
Yeah, I Although, think. Although to be fair, I, yeah, it, it is one of those things that makes sense because nuclear submarines, nuclear they power can run last for like forever. potentially yeah, for, like over a hundred years. Yes, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. exactly, exactly. Right. Yeah, I guess because it wouldn't be like gasoline or yeah, like most, anything most like that. It would nu- be like nuclear subs or whatever nuclear aircraft carriers. I think could go like run on like sixty years on one one source one fuel rod, like one source of fuel. Oh yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. because we even see in, like, Fallout and stuff, they're still using nuclear weapons and whatnot. But, yeah, I think the fourth book is going to get insanely interesting because we get, uh, you know, they're they're running away from this building after Lydia, like, sets off her explosives and everything, and they're confronted with Vedusia, the spy master, and someone else, I forget who. Um, But... Uh, you know, Lydia or um, Vedusia turns into her like dragon form, and it's like, what are we gonna do? And she tells everybody else to get back, and then she opens up the sky and allows the sun yeah. to come in. Yeah, that was crazy. for a minute. Oh crazy. my god, I was not expecting that. Yeah, and I was just like, mm-hmm. what the hell? And everybody like scatters the one guy like puts up his coat but the sun still doesn't, gets yeah, him it doesn't help and uh and like darcy is like just melting from the sun but she keeps it open just long enough to scare away Vedusia. Yep. and then she closes it and she like falls to the ground and her hair is all gone and she's burnt everywhere and i thought she was dead i thought darcy was about to die um and sure enough when felix goes over there her like eyes are the only thing that's like still really working um and she's like she's like i'm okay like I'm, i just need to i just need to walk it off <laughs> another thing which is kind of cool because like yeah. the, yeah. the, queen, the queen is the one that's holding winter right she's the one keeping the cloud cover so it's yeah. cool to see that like darcy yeah. like darcy is in part has the queen's power right if she can break apart the clouds and make the sun yeah. come when it hasn't for 40 years or whatever it's yeah. been 50 years and that's yeah. you know she's got some serious serious power yeah what what mm-hmm, do you guys mm-hmm. think about the uh about the prophecy where darcy is another part like when when the goddess separated she separated into a avatar of destruction and an avatar of love and Darcy is basically the avatar of love and, and the queen, like the official queen yeah. is like the avatar of destruction. Um, it's, it's kind of been a hard prophecy to follow, Yeah, but yeah. I don't mind it. I think, mm, mm. yeah, no, I think, I think it gives them a lot of room to, to really, really make something cool happen, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I feel sure. like they're heading into Egyptian stuff by the sounds of it as well, like ancient uh, Egyptian mythology. Yeah. Um, there's been oh, hints really? of Egyptian stuff going on. So, yeah, I, 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 I'm excited to see if they follow up on on that as well. Okay, that's cool. I don't, I don't think I caught the uh, the Egyptian stuff, but I do love like uh, ancient Egypt stuff. It's uh, it's because I'm a massive mythology nerd. Oh, really? Awesome. Okay, nice. I really enjoy reading about <laughs> <Yeah>. mythology. <laughs> is there anything you can point to specifically, or just like the like the prophecy in general is very Egyptian in nature? Um, I think I think that when they talked about this two separate gods, um, the names of the god, or they referenced names of the gods, and I can't remember which ones, but they had, I think, like Hathor and Set or something. And I can't remember off the top of my head, but I was like, oh, those are Egyptian gods. Um, oh, interesting. So, yeah, I think it was referen- I think it was referencing Egyptian uh, gods as well, um, and that's not a mythology you see explored quite so much as Greek or Norse. So, I'd be yeah. excited mm-hmm. if they do in fiction. That anyway. would be cool. So, I'd That'd be, be a really cool way for direction. them to go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I do I'd like. Um, I, I I do like them being two sides of the same coin. It makes sense. Um, in terms of the story, like if you're going to go where they're both the same people, you might as well um, do, you, you, you know, you might as well tie it into something that's ancient and real world, 
real world, yeah. like something people really did believe. Um, yeah. You might as well go that way, rather. Although it, it stops it seeming too convenient if you re- reference a real life mythology. Yeah, if you have if you have something to to base it on, then uh, it gives a little bit more foundation to the to the whole idea for yeah. sure. So she she closes up the uh, the sky and they get back to the boat and she's kind of on her bed like healing up and whatnot. Um, and I wish I had written it down, but there was a great scene between her and Felix, and then there was another great scene between her and Hope. And this is where Darcy is like, maybe it wasn't the water that healed Lydia. Like, what else? And and Hope says, what else could it have been? Oh, yeah. And then Darcy Mm -hmm. even, like, uh, reiterates that later. And so I'm interested to see what they're doing with Hope because she is part of the prophecy, at least from what we've been told. Yeah. and so I'm yeah. interested to see how she's used in the fourth book um, because she's definitely got a big role to play, it seems like. And I'm I'm curious, do you guys think they're going to end it with the fourth book? Do you, do you think that'll be... It kind of seems like it's being set up for like the final battle, right? Yeah, I would I would say it's being set up for the final battle. I don't I don't know. I mean, I feel like it would make the most sense to uh-huh. you know, to do that, but the potential is there for more. So, yeah. So, when I was listening to it and I got to the end of the third book, for me I was like, I think this is going to be 5. I think there's yeah. going to be um I think they're going to go the the quest into Europe. Uh, will be there'll be a quest into Europe to find the Queen's resting place, um, yeah. And then I think there's going to be, personally, that my thought was then there'll be maybe a series where it's the heroes versus the Queen, and the Queen is the main antagonist through a full mm. final series. Mm. Um, that's that's kind of um, what I thought, but you know, yeah. I, maybe that's wishful thinking because I want it to keep going on as well. Right. <laughs> yeah, because I, I enjoy yeah. it so much. Yep. It, <laughs> it does seem like a fourth book would be a weird, like you you don't see too many four book series, right? Or yeah, like I would four probably feel too, too soon to end. You know, yeah. it, they would have to cram too much into one, you know, yeah. eight hour audio book uh, and make it difficult to tell the story. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, that'd be tough. I I would I would like to have a full season of the queen being the active antagonist. Maybe maybe at the end of season 4 they accidentally set her free and she's just able to like go into the world. Yeah. Um mm-hmm, and so mm-hmm. that would that would be really cool just having her like out and yep. and like, her messing out with stuff. causing yeah, causing mayhem and destruction and then they have to like yeah. Really go get her for the final time. Yeah. Yeah, that'd yeah. be great. Yeah. That'd be great. What do you think the queen would turn into? Like as a like as like an, as animal, an animal or a like we, we've got a dragon. What yeah. will Yeah, the, what's what, higher what, than what a would dragon? The queen turn into? That's a good question, man. Mm. Yeah, maybe like a giant like a giant bat monster. Or like uh It could just be a giant. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it could be a giant. I'm trying to think yeah, like what's other nice. like a uh... Does Darcy turn like, into what's... anything? Does Kaiju? She... Yeah, she turns into yeah, a Kaiju. lion. That's her thing. She she uh-huh. can turn into a yeah, lion. Yeah, she turns into a lion in the first book. Oh, okay. Yep. Huh. When her hunger's kind of taken over. Uh right. yeah, her her thing if she was to turn into would be a lion. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So what's What's like the enemy of the lion? Lions don't have many enemies. Oh. <laughs> Poaching? Man? Well, <laughs> maybe she, she turns, just turns into, a, into man. a guy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just a man. She just turns into a guy named Kevin. <laughs> yeah, who works at uh, yeah. who, he a, works in IT. Yeah, <laughs> with a gun. Yeah, with yeah. a with an air a rifle. Man with a gun. Sleep dart yeah. with a hunter. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, that's great. Um, I did think it was funny. A hippo. A hippo? hippo. Oh, that'd be Hippos wild. are like Just the most big. dangerous Hippos animals. Hippos are like yeah, the most they are. dangerous animals. That's absolutely correct. 
Yeah, they're just like <laughs> <laughs> just the giant hippo. Yeah, they don't have any natural uh, predators. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> well, what as she, we oh, get, what if she turns into like a snake, like a super venomous Ooh, snake, like a, a big a, ass a snake? A snake, a snake can kill anything if it bites it. Yeah, they could kill a hippo with sick. one bite. But what about like maybe like a named monster that oh, already yeah. exists in in mythology, yeah. like right. a biblical monster, like Leviathan yeah. or yeah. Behemoth, like some gigantic sea yep. serpent, or, yep. or like right. an end of the world already type had, like, monster. Yeah, yeah. Or Jormungunda. It's yeah. like she is Jormung <laughs> yeah. She is Jormungunda yeah. from fiction from from Ragnarok. Yep, yep. Oh man, that's cool. I'll be stoked be to sick. see if she does. Turn into something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'd be cool. Yeah, I I would be on board for a for a snake or just like a giant uh um like what was the not like Loch Ness, but like what's the giant like sea serpent kind of thing? Um I'm forgetting uh, the actual. Well, I mean name that would be it. the Leviathan. The Leviathan I oh, think. Oh, is that is the a, Leviathan? Right? Okay. Doesn't that Leviathan. come from the water? Yeah, yeah. Leviathan. Okay, yeah, that would yeah. be that would be sick. Or a kraken, you or should could kraken. be a giant. Oh, squid. kraken, yeah, that's yeah. what I was thinking of. I think yeah, kraken yeah. and leviathan are kind of along the uh -huh. same same line. Yeah, that'd be mm -hmm. super cool. Or a hydra. Oh, a hydra would be cool. Yeah, nice. that would be sick. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I I'm I love hydras. Hydras are awesome, why, dude. Why why have we not gotten to mm -hmm. fight? like a big ass hydra in a game yet or or maybe there's just i haven't played a game where we fought a hydra but that would be so sick sneak peek in he who fights with monsters you need to get on them god of war games hydras is is there a hydra in the god of war in the new god of war games no 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 the 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 original, original. ones where it was actually oh, nice. set in ancient greece and you fight all the ancient greek monsters yeah you fight like cyclops oh. hydra hecatonchires like as much as I love the latest God of War games, mm -hmm. um, because I love Greek mythology the most, they were my jam. And you get to nice. fight all of the, you know, nice. monsters. And then you end up fighting Zeus at the yeah, end. Right. It's just That's so cool. freaking good, <laughs> those awesome. games. But yeah, there's Hydra and all the Greek monsters, you know, Manticore, everything. Oh, Manticores are cool. I, I like Manticores oh, yeah. a lot. Yeah, that'd be yeah. sick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I read, what was sick. that series I read? The, the Iron Druid series is what it's called. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Okay. It's kind I of see. like a modern, like, I would, I would kind of say like Dresden Files ish. Yeah. Just because it's modern with magic. Adjacent. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But there's like a druid and, and, and all, like, all the gods are real and he fights manticores and like, he like is like runs around with the fae and, and meets yeah. like Athena and she's, you know, a person and this and that. It's pretty cool. Yeah. That's another series. I am druid. It's a great name it. for a band. Yeah, I'm Druid. <laughs> but I think That's RJ, great. I think you'd like it if you could. I I think you'd like it a lot. It sounds I'll right up your alley because it's it like audio on audio. Yeah, it's on audio. Yeah, it's, it's like 100% based on like all the mythologies. Like, I mean, it's a real story, but it's mm -hmm. full of mythos. Yeah, it's or like the, uh... the Iron Druid Chronicles is what it's called. Yeah, it's like set that in awesome. modern day. Yeah, it's like modern, modern day, day, but he's a druid. But, but it's by Kevin Hearn. They're they're really good, man. They're short and sweet, and I've listened to all of them, and I really enjoy them. Yeah, awesome. I've put it on the list. Sweet. Yo, nice. Yeah, nine hours. Nine hours forty. I can do that. Yeah. Okay, so as we as we wrap up this story, we have one final thing to kind of get to, where they're kind of um, they're like getting their plans together and they're like we're about to go find uh the queen and try to kill her and everybody is having last minute hookups <laughs> uh yeah <laughs> and it's true who, it's true yeah who, who walks in who walks in on darcy blowing felix <laughs> Was oh, that, I don't. I don't remember. Was that this. Penelope or, <laughs> or one of them? I don't remember this. I, I think that was like... Penelope. <laughs> I was like, I hope it's not crap. Hope because that's her sister. <laughs> that I know, weird. right? I know. Yeah. But yeah, I was listening to it, and I'm like, you know, R R J and how I were talking know, about. How did you know she was blowing? And like, does it specifically say? Well, or, or what was there's. That? So like, I missed yeah. that. I missed that part. So. So sh they're obviously hooking up, and okay. there's there's certain sounds that are playing during it. Oh, <laughs> um, but but also 
but also Felix is, yeah, like yeah. he's not. Yep. He he's not like. Oh god, this is so hard to talk about. He's like not actively engaged in like sex or something. Mm-hmm. Like she's obviously doing something to him. Oh, and because so... he's like talking or whatever. Yeah, or, like, exactly. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay, all right. He, he's talking as she's doing it. Yeah. Um. And so then I think mm-hmm. it's yeah so with, Penelope with the or power somebody of walks your in. Inference you deduced. Yes, <laughs> I deduced. She was I was going uh, down on him. <laughs> I was a real Sherlock Holmes. Yep, you really um, did deduce the shit <laughs> But yeah, I thought that Dirty was Sherlock. super funny. Yeah. I know, right? <laughs> oh my god. Um, but yeah, then we get Rook showing up, and he yeah, and oh, uh, yeah, Darcy, was... they kind of square up, and they he like joins them. And well, at the end about, of the book, I mean, talk about like that. That whole scene was pretty impactful too. Like where, yeah, Rook is like Rook is just convinced of this law that has been for so long, you know, mm-hmm. about like you killed my maker. Like, like this, this is has to be done. And Darcy makes him realize, like, look, look at what, look at what's going on. Like, look at, look at everything. And yeah. Tell me, tell me, like, yeah. that you don't want to still be a part of this. And he breaks yeah. down. He's like, I don't. Like, I don't want to be a part of this anymore. So, like, well, come right. on then, because we're going to change mm-hmm. that. Yeah, exactly. And and he was also upset about the death of Whisper. Yes. Because Whisper had been protecting Darcy and, and Felix yep. when she got beheaded. Yeah, Whisper is and... my favorite mm-hmm. character, dude. Broke my heart yeah. when she died. I know. I loved Whisper. She was yep. great. Yeah, that was that was a real, like, tear-jerker yeah, scene. Bummer, I, I couldn't believe when Whisper died. But, um... Mm-hmm. But yeah, so then he does kind of like reluctantly join them. And I'm interested to see where he goes from here because... Well, he goes off end, with, right? He goes, yeah. okay, all right, go ahead, sorry. Yeah, they well, they, they split off, right? And so it's Hope, Penelope, Lydia, and right. Rook. Yeah. And then it's Darcy, Felix, uh, the lady that... Oh yeah, I, I forgot her name too. I know who you're talking about. Yeah, though. all right. Yeah, it's a weird name. Uh, Kershian. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. So it's them, and then I feel like there's some more people on the boat. Doesn't she have like some lackeys? Kershian. And stuff yeah. That are Kershian also has has some. I feel like brought one or two people or yeah. something like that. Yeah. Um. So they're all going off to find to figure out where the queen is. Where the architect but, is, right? That's where they're headed. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and Darcy has to wipe the memory of oh, everyone yeah. else. Yep. And this well, I thought was, it was a moment. Hope. No, it was all of them because they all have oh. to. Because all of the other vampires outrank everyone, including uh, Penelope. Yeah. And so mm. at the end, we get a conversation between the two of them where they're watching the boat go away, mm. and Hope says something like wait, shouldn't we be on that boat? And then the other people say, no, they didn't take the boat, remember? And they're like, oh, yeah. And so it's like everybody's had their memory wiped. (laughs) And they're Mm -hmm. like, their job is to make the vampires that are chasing them, like Chase, Hope, and Penelope and all them, instead of Darcy. Yeah, so break in their mind, they they won't find anything. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and so I'm yeah. just like, dude, one of them is going to die. And yeah. I bet I bet it's going to be yeah. Penelope. I, I don't think Penel- Penelope makes it through yeah, the rest that's, of the that's series. That's probably a fair. I, I would. No. I mean, I, I really hope not because I really like Penelope, but that, that would make the yeah. most sense. <laughs> It'd be her or Rook, but Rook is passing wouldn't be as intense of a bummer for everybody as Penelope's. And I, I think, think that Rook might Rook, have Rook's a... been in it since the start, though. Well, no, no, he he has, yeah, but, but I think, but I feel like this last book, like completely, almost right, like we've seen yeah. so much of Penelope. So, but but you're right, Rook has mm-hmm. been there since the beginning. Everybody would be, yeah, sad. it would be a bummer. I, I think, I think that at this point, Penelope is probably like a fan favorite. Yeah, and mm-hmm. she's like Gabe said, she's also just like been that she's had a lot of screen time yep. in the past book or two. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. and so I think that would be like a devastating death oh yeah and they i would, think that would be a blow to all the readers if that's the way they yeah, to go that that would be tough and i think that i think that rook is going to have a bit of a redemption arc or some sort of character mm-hmm. arc that's going to follow him 
to the end. Like, I don't think his story is done, mm. but I think Penelope's kind of is. Like, she doesn't really have anything that's, like, propelling her forward other than just watching out for Hope and Lydia. And so I think... Mm -hmm. I think she's gonna like hope and Lydia are going to get to a point where they're like pretty self-sufficient yeah. and Penelope is, is going to die. I think so. Mm -hmm. I mean, I really it... liked, um, Rooks, uh, when he came, it very much felt when he said he was going to join in and one anointed one. Um, yes. I felt like it was very much his and my ax moment. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Well, how, how would you feel if, <clears throat> In uh, series four, the person not to make it through was Hope. Oh. Like, would you like that? Because, like, it's built up to the prophecy of, like, she's going to save well, everyone if... or has something to play. And then, like, yeah. the ultimate curveball of, like, nope. Not her. It's gonna oh, have to be someone else yeah, now. Yeah, that would that would that would be tough, man. That would I suck, feel like yeah. if, if she were to die by saving the planet, like as a sacrifice, yeah, it makes sense, mm -hmm. right? I would not be. Yeah. Super, I mean, I'd be heartbroken, but she saved the world. Awesome. But yeah, if, because if she I, just if she just uh -huh. died and then they were like, yeah, no, she never she never had any any uh, intention of saving yeah. anything. She's just dead. <laughs> Yeah, that that would that would suck. I don't I don't think they would do that, but I would I could see them because right now it's set up and, and Darcy even says as much. It's set up for Darcy to be the noble sacrifice. Like it, right now, yeah. everybody's thinking that Darcy is going to make this noble sacrifice, but I kind of wonder if it's going to be hope. Like if she's going to be the final sacrifice that like saves everybody somehow. I, I could totally mm -hmm. see mm -hmm. that happening for sure. And like Darcy living on yeah. with Felix. Yeah. Because I, you know, RJ and I were talking about this earlier. The, the book has been pretty shy about just like killing off like major characters. And I don't know if the writers would leave Felix alone. Like, I don't know if they would like, either have felix die and darcy live or Dar darcy die and felix live I, mm. I don't i don't know that they would do that necessarily maybe they would maybe i'm wrong but it doesn't seem like it i feel like i'd be too sad for felix yeah like yeah, i already real. feel really sorry for him yeah and right and like he's like oh I i'm such a second fiddle and then the person i'm a second fiddle to is dead <laughs> yeah <laughs> no, exactly yeah. yeah that would be rough <laughs> yeah yeah Oh, Brutal. Man. Yep. Brutal's yeah. right. Well, that's uh that's the end of, of season three. And I I liked it a lot. I was so excited when this popped up on Audible and it was just like it's it always feels good to see a new season of of Impact Winter. I was telling yep. RJ earlier that we had um you know, we had we had listened to the first season, and then we had to wait like a year and a half until yeah. we got the next one. And then we got the next mm -hmm. one, and it was like this big celebration. And then the third one seemed like it came out pretty quickly after the second. I, yeah, I have to like go back half and look a year, at when seven I... seven months maybe. Something yeah, like something like that. It was. It seemed like a pretty quick uh, turnaround because I think it was like the beginning of this year, or maybe like the very end of last year. Yeah. Where it, where the other when the other one came out so um pretty good turnaround and uh mm -hmm. god i i am so i'm so excited for for season four um yeah. especially after season two left kind of like a a bad taste in my mouth yep. i you know we've we've talked about it extensively on this episode but it just like left me feeling kind of weird um and so i'm I'm really happy that season three completely won me over again yeah. because that's I, I really needed that for sure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, I personally really liked season two as well, but um, mm. season three just took things up to a really much higher uh, level for me. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I loved that just went. I loved the confidence for them to just go. We've gone full fantasy now. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, like just absolutely took it up another level. I love that it just was bold enough to really freshen things up by going right now we're at the highest echelon of things instead of just scrabbling around in the back country trying to survive. So yeah, I'm 
Uh, and the plot has a real sense of momentum now. Yeah. Like it's got a real yeah. sense of we we know what we need to do to basically save Earth. Um, right. And we are on the way to do it now. Yeah, for real. Yeah, there there's like a mission and it, it also added a lot of different mm-hmm. uh like layers of the story. It wasn't just like Darcy's turned into a vampire and Hope is trying to find her. It's like now there's yeah. all these different like conflicting stories that are all going to mm-hmm. get in each other's way at, at some point. Um and all yeah. of the political intrigue and like the big castle they were in and everything like yeah, it, the whole, mm-hmm. the whole, exactly what RJ was just saying, like the the level of umph they added to everything. Like, I, at the end of book two, like she was like looking for the queen because she was in her head, whatever. And then book or series three starts, and it's like, no, now she's quite literally queen of the entire planet. She is queen of the world as we know it. She's yeah. queen of the yeah. vampires and the vampires. Oh, yeah, are yeah, the she power. really is, isn't she? Yeah. Like, yeah, dude. Yeah. She's like, yeah. and then yeah. you know, seeing I didn't like even everybody. Think about that. Yeah, she's the queen of the whole entire planet, dude. It's crazy, crazy to think about. Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. I I think that uh, it's it's really, really leading up to something special, and it's kind of that uh, we're we're slowly getting those anime moments of like people getting like their thing. You know what I mean? Like yeah. everybody's kind of getting their power up. Um, and RJ and I were talking earlier about how Lydia is now likely like a half vampire or something. So she's probably going to be able like to fend vampire. for herself. A vampire. A vampire. Uh, and uh, yeah, she'll probably be able to fend mm-hmm. for herself in, in some way, shape or form. Um, and so it'll be interesting to see what Hope's thing is. Um, it's going to be something it's going to be something wicked. I really do feel like the the ho- the spring water that she went to was was just a a bucket of water. I don't think it had anything special about it. But mm. when she was like, she really she like, blessed it. She, well, yeah, pretty much. She really like just like let go of everything she's ever known, and the only thing she wanted to do was just save her life, and she did. I yeah. feel like I feel like that's more mm-hmm. her, mm-hmm. but she just hasn't yeah. even come close yeah. to understanding what she's got. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully. Hopefully we'll get some reveals. Yeah, or a couple in, more in like really season. crazy situations where she has to like pull it out of her ass, and then right. she'll be like, "Okay, this has happened twice. Something's yeah. going on." Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, I think those are kind of our uh, final thoughts. Yeah. Sweet. Sound mm-hmm. good. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. Well, we are gonna wrap it up there, everyone. Uh, as always you can reach out to us on our socials those are all linked down in the description um i'm gonna have rj's or rj's links uh, down there as well um (laughs) so that you yeah so you can uh go to his he's got like youtube channels and he's got uh, twitter and all that so you can keep up with him there um, and then, as always, our Patreon is also linked down there, uh, where you can watch these episodes live as we record them and participate in the chat and talk with us while we discuss these books or audio dramas or TV shows or whatever we're talking about that week. Uh, we'd love to hear from you guys uh, during the during the episode and after. So leave us a comment if you'd like to talk about Impact Winter. Let us know what your favorite. Uh, season was or what your favorite character is we love talking about impact winter so um you know we'd we'd love to hear from you on that um upcoming episodes i'm not quite sure uh i think we'll probably have a harry potter episode coming up pretty soon that'll be goblet of fire and then the next uh, Stormlight Archive book. So those those are two big ones that are coming up pretty soon, but I don't have the schedule completely figured out as of uh, this time of recording. So hit subscribe, keep your eyes uh, peeled for some of those episodes, and we will see you in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time... I cry a lot. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> And a big shout out to Caitlin. Thank you so much for backing us at the Greenbone tier.